Yet. Okay, almost messed that up again. <laughs> I do this very often. Um, good afternoon, evening, or morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing fantastic today. Happy Tuesday. Just another beautiful day, hopefully for you, anyway. It's uh, gloomy and disgusting here, but uh, nevertheless, good things are coming our way. Um, first things first, I gotta take out my tongue piercing. I always find myself stumbling on my speech with it. Only on stream, though. Really weird. Uh, so, quick recap of the last stream we had. We went just over odds. Um, I guess a little more than just over. Uh, on Route 2, we got our first Shiny Pidgey at 11,248 encounters. Our third encounter of the row that was over... Or in a row that was over odds. So that's, um, 
that's kind of vile. But hey, it's what we're here for. It's um, it's all part of the game. I put a poll up earlier. Uh, I put one on Discord, one on our YouTube channel here, and I gave you guys the option between if you wanted to hunt on Route 2 today or Route 22, and just over half of you uh, voted Route 2, so that's where we're going. Makes the most sense. I, uh, I mean, I, I, I gotta say, I, I probably would have done that if nobody else had uh, had given any input. I guess. Um, yeah. Without further ado, uh, one more thing, and we will get right into it. So, I got something yesterday. I went out to the thrift store, and uh, it was something I found that I I thought was really cool, uh, and it might not be to you, but. <laughs> found this bell and I decided that every time I get a shiny I will do one loud ding of the bell now yes I know I could easily put a key bind to a bell noise and it would be the same kind of thing but to me it's the the being able to actually hit the damn thing that's fun so you hear that we got a shiny um, I'm just gonna check my audio real quick and we'll get right into it All right, well, um, you could hear the bell, not as loud as I wanted, but I guess I'll have to just like run rampant on it, give it a whole like. That's probably good enough. Let me let me double check that. Okay, that was a little better, that was a little better. I just had to test the bell and make sure it was even doing anything with the noise suppression. But you could hear it. Um, so I'll just reiterate, if you come on stream and you hear this, by any run of the imagination, the likelihood of that is very low. However, if you do, it means there's, there's a shiny on screen, so start scattering your eyes across and looking for it. Uh, anyway, I think my spiel is about over. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get right into it and start hunting. It's, uh, it's about that time. So I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day, night, morning, whatever it may be. Uh, I hope your days have all been as good as they can be. Um, if you guys want to share, you know, what you're doing for the week, uh, how your weekend was, whatever the, that may be. Um, always happy to hear. Uh, speaking for myself, this weekend was extremely hectic. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's not even get too too far into that. I short of the long, I got fucked over on my lease because of my roommates. So I uh, I got stuck paying for a whole house on my own because some people don't know how to give a little bit of warning when they make plans, but that's life. Um, unfortunately, that's something that I just have to deal with, and thankfully, I am well enough equipped to handle. But, uh, oh, shit, look at number 10. Just vibing right where it shouldn't be. Let's, uh, let's just move 10 back over to a nice spot here, why don't we? Let's just... There you go, buddy. Now ain't that just a little bit better. There we go. Well, this is our first encounter of the phase. Have we stirred up any luck for the evening? Oh, not quite yet. That's all right, though. We got plenty of time ahead of us to do such a thing. Plenty, plenty. Um, if anyone just wants to give a little bit of feedback, a little bit of input, let me know if the audio is sounding all right. I heard, uh, I heard myself. However, I don't know if the game audio is all synced up as it should be. I'll give it one quick listen.
Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. Just figured I'd give her one little, little double check to make sure. Hope you're having a fantastic day, man. How you doing? I take it you're still still pushing uh, pushing shit at the old yard or what? I'm pushing a thumbstick if that counts. Does that make me relatable? Uh, no, it's funny, I actually, I don't push it. In fact, I actually pull it, given that it's always pulled straight up. Uh, so I guess we're not quite in the same boat there. You know, it's funny, I don't know, I don't know what it is about today, exactly. But, uh, correct on the pushing dirt, brother, but you know... What I always say, you gotta push dirt to make girls squirt. <laughs> is that what you say? Is that is that something I, I've known you to always say now? That's <laughs> that's funny that I'm just now learning this. <laughs> uh no, I like that. I like that. That's funny. That is funny. I uh No, <laughs> don't even feel bad, it's it's funny. Um it, it, it was tasteful enough within, within, uh, within reason. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh goodness, my brain is moving slow today, and you know I know that for one simple reason. Usually every single stream, I will smoke a little bit, and generally that's my reason for being a little, little slow, little spacey. Um, but today is the exact same, and I didn't smoke. So <laughs> oh, I think I think I'm just overtired. I think I'm just kind of kind of high strung a little bit. But uh, work for me today. It, it it was pretty good, Jack. I can't complain. I, uh, as you know, I was welding all day, or not all day, for, but for a good portion of the day, and I really enjoy doing that kind of. Fab work and really anything to do, you know, welding, painting, designing, cutting, all that kind of stuff. So it uh, it was a good day work-wise. I enjoyed myself. I was sweaty, which was awesome because uh, I only have rubber steel toes at my work right now. <laughs> Long story, but uh, overall, I can't complain. The day was pretty good. How has your day been so far? I say that as you are not home yet, so I know the work day still persists. I will say I am uh, I am excited for this month to be over. It'll be nice to have my house all to myself for a little while. Oh my goodness. I got... Well, let's just go all the way over there. Since you guys don't want to go right where the fuck I want you to. Uh, okay... Uh, that's a little bit better. That's a lot of bit better, actually. Goodness, it's going to be quite hectic once we get past the, um... <sighs> Excuse me. It's going to be quite hectic once we get past, uh, you know, all the, the first routes here. And we actually have to train up and go to a gym. We're not very well equipped. <laughs> um, and, I mean, not only that, but I, I think the synchrony issues are going to grow hilarious very quickly. Welding is a nice ch change of pace for you, I bet. Always good to change things up at ye old job. What the f- Oh, ye old job site. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. It's, um, you know, I, I do... I do a lot of, like, small welding jobs, just, like, frame repair and, uh, you know, making, making little brackets and stuff like that, but getting to actually, you know, do, like, 15, 20 feet of passes was nice. Especially because, you know, one of the, one of the coolest things about that is you throw on the helmet, you start zapping, and everybody leaves you right the fuck alone, because nobody wants to be near all the all the uh, UV light that gets produced. 
that. Which, I mean, myself included, I can't really say I love that. I had my welding cap on my head today. And let's see if you can see it. Okay, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. So I had my welding cap on my head today. And I was zapping away, and I got probably, I don't know, I did probably like five, five or six feet of passes, and I started to feel warm on my, on my forehead. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, fuck me. I really forgot my welding cap again. So I, I was sitting here concerned, like, I'm gonna have fucking sunburn on my head. When I go home, which if you haven't welded before and you haven't had that happen, um, if you ever do weld, put put a fucking cap on. <laughs> but it, so it's funny. I felt I, I just kind of put my hand up to my head to see if I was right or wrong. And uh, sure as shit, I had my cap on. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. This doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I uh, I just felt a little bit more. I was like, because I was feeling through welding gloves, right? But I'm like, no, it's. It's all there. It's as low as it's supposed to be. So, I um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just uh, I I stopped what I was doing. I took everything off. I went back to my bench. Well, actually, my my toolbox rather. And I went and I found another welding cap and I doubled up. <laughs> and uh, I did another like 12 feet of passes and I was fine past that. But goodness, um, I I I was going to be very pissed if I had came home and I had a burn on my forehead. Especially when I took the precautions I was supposed to. Uh, you know what? I don't have the chat up on my screen here, I'm realizing. I just have it on the... Here we go, here we go. But yeah, welding sunburn sucks, but I will say there is one thing worse, and that's weld flash on the eyes. You ever had weld flash here? Holy... It is the worst thing you will ever feel besides... Well, I'm not gonna say that, but it's really bad. It's literally a sunburn on your eyes. It is not desirable in the slightest. Welding is an invaluable skill. Pat out that resume gives you a certain level of job security on most jobs that require it. Well, first of all, welcome to the stream, Yuki. Happy to see you here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, however, I will, I will fully agree with you. Uh, I will say that welding is a skill that, um, while, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not super, super skilled in it like I'm I'm pretty good with a MIG unit don't get me wrong but uh, you get me on a stick and I'm not I'm not even really good I will say that um, but you know how to use a MIG machine even and that that honestly is quite enough to do most welding jobs that I've ever encountered as a, as a heavy-duty mechanic anyway um, and you know, it, it really is, if you if you have somebody around you that um, has a torch and, you know, you're willing to pay for some wire and some gas, or you have a job where they they have that available to you, it is it is most definitely very, very worth it to just shoot your shot and try to learn as much as you can, because, you know, two years ago, I, I didn't know, I didn't know how to use the torch from a hole in the wall, but, um... You know, just just little bits here and there, and suddenly you uh, you find yourself in a pickle where you say, "Okay, well, I need this bracket, but the bracket costs, you know, I don't know, a few hundred dollars, right?" Well, if I have some scrap metal, uh, I can take an hour of my time and I can create that exact same thing. Whereas before, I mean, you gotta you gotta rely on bolting stuff together, and it, it just it doesn't work that well. Especially when you need something that's really genuinely strong. Um, a weld is oftentimes the only thing that's gonna it's gonna really keep you there. Uh, but I mean, I, I shouldn't be. Uh, I, I'm kind of crass to say that. Um, depends on what you're making. Depends on what you're making. Hey, ye old pokey telephone. How is it going? Happy to see you. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. You don't have to even, you don't even have to be proficient TBH, I just hired a guy because he had a month of welding experience over a guy with 15 years experience in the field I'm in because welding is more valuable. Well, and see, just, just, uh, just right there, it, it goes to show that uh, obviously you're, you're in a position that, uh, that you're, you're in a high, I, how, <laughs> words, you're in a hiring position, so obviously that's something that you, you greatly understand, it's, 
you know, and I, we see this a lot in our field too, is you can have a guy who has done the same job for 5, 10, 15 years, and I mean, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not going to put myself on a pedestal here, but I'll, I'll give an example. So, at my work, we have three journeymen and a bunch of apprentices, I guess six, because you can have two apprentices to a journeyman. And of all of us, me and one journeyman know how to weld. Um, and I, I can tell you for a fact that for most jobs that have more um, more of a curve to how they're done, you know, more, more of a, uh, a, a difficulty level to them when it comes to stuff like that, not even necessarily welding, but similar things, uh, it's me or the foreman that people go to and a huge huge part of it is just not and th this this applies to a broader spectrum it, it's having that willingness to learn and that ability to listen to people really opens up so many opportunities and when you do that you know anywhere and everywhere and anywhere in your life you find that once you get to a position where like you had uh, you have a guy with a little bit of experience but valuable skill versus a lot of experience and maybe lacking a bit of skill. Um, that's just kind of where one can get that edge. So I, I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. What, uh, what, what field are you in, Yuki, if you don't mind me asking? Hey, Charizard. Happy to see you're doing good. That is awesome. What's the, what's the plans for the day, buddy? Hey, Bill. I see you're in my, in my house. I didn't hear you coming. No, don't run away. No. I want a pen hoot. Okay, fine. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I feel like being able to cut cleanly with an oxyacetylene torch is just as valuable as being able to weld on a job site. I will say uh, that is another one that we use very, very often. And a lot of guys think that you can just turn on the torch, pull the handle, and you're you're good. But that, that <laughs> if you've cut with an oxyacetylene torch, that is most definitely not how that works. And I was very, very lucky to have a person who used to be a, um, an actual, like, a torch instructor who taught me to use mine, but it, it is crazy, you know, you look at this big, long flame, and you think that, oh, there's no way you can get something clean out of that, you can't, you can't make a good cut, like, you can just kind of blow stuff out of your way and then, um, and clean up afterward, but honestly, if you if you know what to look for, if you know the sounds to listen for, um, you can make extremely clean cuts. Granted, it is just a flame, uh, but for being just a flame, you can make some very clean cuts with oxyacetylene. And even just using it to warm a bolt to back something off or something, a lot of guys don't know how to use it and they'll melt a nut by accident. You know, melt the corner of it and now a socket won't get on it or something. Campy, welcome to stream. Sorry it took me so long. I'm going on tangents on tangents here. Um, hope you're having a fantastic day. Hope you're doing well. Um, what are you up to? What you getting up to today, man? Watching stream, playing Alpha Sapphire. Nice! Back on that Alpha Sapphire grind, I see. How's that going for you? And, as I've said before, happy to see you here. I appreciate that. Garage Doors specifically hired the guy for installation side because the track requires some welding every so often and I don't have to sub that out. Yeah, that, um, I, I could imagine that would be much, much, much more expensive once you go and you farm out that kind of job because, I mean, yeah, in a shop you're paying a guy, I don't know, depending on the experience, 30 to, I don't know, 30 to 40 bucks an hour. Um, keep in mind I'm Canadian, so take the numbers I'm giving with a grain of salt but um, you, you farm that out and that's like hundred and fifty dollars an hour makes no sense when you just need somebody who knows how to do a little quick zip zap <laughs> um, now you, you you take that and speaking of which what I'm gonna take is this fucking hoodie off because oh my god I am warm I usually wear this all stream but I am just heating right up today. Um, oh, wow. Uh, what I was going to say is, uh, the, the thing too is, you, you get a guy who hasn't really welded before, and 
you try to get him doing it for the first couple of times, and you're doing commercial work, it's not gonna look clean. Doesn't matter what way you cut it, it's not gonna look clean. Unless the guy's an absolute genius when it comes to learning new skills. I just cut out a class, we're on pre-trip inspections and driving a route in the truck. It's kind of tough. Well, are you enjoying it so far? Um, and I guess, so what, um, are they doing just like tractor pre-trips? Are you doing tractor trailer pre-trips? I would assume you're doing the whole thing. Um, and actually now that I say that, that was a dumb question. So, <laughs> maybe just, uh, maybe just don't acknowledge that. But, uh, what are you, what are you finding, at being that you've been in, it's been what, a week or two now? Um, in this course, are you are you finding there's anything particular that you're struggling with? Anything in particular that interests you? And you know it's crazy um, it's how many people I've worked with that oh for Fox Creek uh, how many people I've worked with that. You know, have been driving for years and years and years, and like actually, just this morning, we had a guy leaving, and he's he's been a class one driver for I want to say like 15 years, and he was leaving to haul uh, haul something across province, and actually it was to another province, and he did his pre trip, and he noticed his his signal lights were out on one side, so he's like, all right, sure, I fixed it up for him, got everything working. Um. <laughs> and then it was funny, he, he was like, getting all ready to go, uh, walking away, yeah, thanks very much, I turn around and I just do one more look of his trailer, because I'm, I'm used to it, I always look at stuff for, you know, just trying to find shit to fix, and, uh, what do I notice is one of his marker lights is out on the back, <laughs> and I look at him, I'm like, dude, did you see that? He's like, oh shit, no. Like, so you, you missed a signal light, but you didn't see this big-ass marker light just sitting there. And I mean, I'm not gonna say there's a fault as far as like, oh, well, yeah, this should have been easier to see, yada yada. No matter what, I guess, if we're being real, you should have seen it all. Because you're doing a pre-trip. But, uh, I just, I just found it funny. It was kind of like that, what do they call it, like the red car... It's like the red car theory or something, where you see a red- you talk about a red car and that's all you see. I feel like that's kind of how that went with, uh... Sorry, I gotta bring these down and over. I feel like that's kind of how that went today, but in a different respect. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, how rude of me. It's the fact that I've never driven a manual transmission, and the first time I'm learning, it's on a 10-speed tractor trailer. The downshifting is what's hardest for me. I, and I know I said this before, but I'll say it again. The downshifting will get much easier for you. It just takes, like, I'm sure at the moment what you're finding is you, because, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that this is done, uh, like, Okay, so in Canada, I don't know if protocol is different than for you guys. Hey, thanks for subscribing, Yuki. I appreciate that. It means a ton. Um, so in Canada, I, I, I just want to preface. I don't know if anything's different than how uh, stuff is that you're learning over there. But when I was taught, and granted, I was taught to drive informally. I learned because I'm a mechanic and I had to bring the equipment around. Um... But I, and I think I might have brought this up before, but I don't use the clutch on uh, downshifts or upshifts. I just don't use the clutch at all unless I'm starting uh, in reverse or first. Um, if you guys aren't using the clutch, um, I find, are you like, do you like kind of rev up on the throttle a little bit to pull the gear out from the synchros and then kind of rev back up and pop it into the lower gear because if you do i have i have kind of a a trick to help you maybe um to find your window where you downshift a little bit more easily but if not i actually i still have a little bit of a way that might help i 
Um, I guess it's so... How do I explain this? Personally, the thing that I found helped me the best, and I, I learned this as well in, um, like, because I, my regular vehicles are manual transmissions as well. Um, and sometimes, although I shouldn't be, uh, <laughs> uh sometimes I, I shift without the clutch just because I don't want to go and kick my foot down, and I know that I can do it well enough to not grind my synchros, but when you're... When you've pulled it out of gear and you're going to the next one, A, you need to kind of know your range, right? So, you know, like at a certain speed. So before you shift up, if you're in third gear and you notice you're going, you know, 30 miles an hour in third gear, just theoretically, um, when you shift up at kind of like your regular 12 to 1400 shift point, um... I totally just lost what I was saying there. Okay, so note that RPM when you shift up, and then when you're in the next gear and you're at that same similar speed, and you go to shift down, you know that you have to be in the same range you were when you went up. Uh, otherwise, you're not gonna, like, those gears are only gonna match in one spot at a given speed, right? So if you can kind of remember that, it'll give you a basis uh, for the future, and it'll be, it'll be infinitesimally helpful. Uh, I still granny shift no matter how consistently I drive a manual, which is rarely now, but when I used to, daily one, I never broke the habit. Hey, I mean, that's, that's fair. That is fair. I, um, I myself have never been one to be consistent. <laughs> it really depends on my day. Uh, if I'm, if I'm having fun and I'm driving around and I'm, you know, full of energy, I'm upbeat, then you'll find me using the clutch most of the time but if i'm lazy and i've just worked you know 10 12 hours and i don't want to do much moving i will just lay back in my seat as far as i go and <laughs> just feel for it and if i miss it i'll fucking blip the throttle up again and if i don't feel it start to give in to the gate then just find it <laughs> just keep going but Keep in mind, I daily drive a diesel that's got almost half a million kilometers on it, so that's uh, it's part of the reason I'm not really too too worried about it, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, um, not only that, Campy. So that'll be one thing that can really really help you. Oh wait, never mind. You, you got your you got your message in right there before I went on my spiel. Give me one second, we'll read this out here did we okay we did go up ultimately you're supposed to double shift when you want to downshift get your rpms to 1200 clutch neutral raise rpms to 15 clutch lower gear fuck i i understand why they want you to double clutch but god for people who have never driven manual before that's got to be so much to take in at once like i've been driving a stick shift for five years daily and I, I don't double clutch. And it's not just like that I don't. I genuinely don't know if I can do it well at all. That's that's so quick. Like, you gotta think. And I, I know you know this, but you're like, clutch out to neutral, clutch in, out. That That's, to do that double pump is just such, especially like, to ha hit the proper bite point on the clutch as well, which I know qu isn't quite as sticky on tractor trailers. I don't know. I don't know. That's just, that's just silly to me. I don't know why they do that to you. But, I want you to downshift, get your RPMs. Or, so, get your RPMs to 1200, clutch. Neutral raise to 1500. Hmm. See, I, I like, I like that advice from them. But the thing is, is like, that's not a... And maybe this is why, because they're kind of doing breadcrumbs at first until you start to catch on a little bit more. But the the thing that I don't like how they teach that is um, two hundred eight thousand. By the way, is the fact that they are giving you a set RPM to try to shift at. But I guess that makes sense because uh, no, no, no. I, I should take that back. That makes sense because 
As long as you're at an appropriate speed for the gear, you technically should be shifting down in the same range every time. So I... I take that back. I take that back. I, I, I should have apprehended my judgment beforehand. But yeah, don't worry. I, I, I know what you meant by the, by the double clutch. I don't have a heap of experience driving stick, but honestly, man, if you hit the gear without it grinding or hurting anybody, who cares? Seems needlessly complex for somebody starting to drive a manual. Exactly. If you have been driving manual for a while and you're wanting to learn for, I mean, say you have a really expensive brand new transmission and a high-end vehicle, well, okay, maybe you want a double clutch because you want to you wanna actually take care of it. But in most vehicles, if you know how to shift and not grind the gears, that is not a concern. That is nothing you need... Oh, wow. Ugh. It's nothing you need to worry yourself about. And it's it just puts that much more stress onto a driver. And you know, I don't know about uh, other parts of the world, but around here, uh, we have a lot of people that are certi certified uh, to drive a tractor trailer. And... Um, I mean, they, they can be certified all the fuck they want, but they're not good at it. <laughs> and these are like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 courses that they take to do this. Um, so, I mean, if I can look at that and see that the majority of people coming out of these schools are not fantastic drivers, um, I think that maybe we should be focusing our attention like, oh, yes, the guys can shift properly, and that that's fantastic, but uh, what happens when Buddy's pulling a train... And he doesn't realize how much clearance he has around the corner. And, uh, boom. Jackknife. Because he thought you needed to make a sharp turn to make it around the corner. Never taught Buddy to watch. Or, uh, just spatial awareness in general. You know, kind of having an idea of how far you can back up. Just in general, like we, we get a lot of trailers back at my company that have dinged in bumpers and bent in side panels all the time. And it's always new drivers for the oil field every fucking time. Every time. It's it's literally like it's a joke at this point. <laughs> uh, that's literally how I feel about those people who take the heavy equipment courses 10 to 15 grand. Like don't waste your money on them. You learn nothing at all. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. And you know the thing is, is a lot of a lot of places, especially for heavy equipment top, you just need to show that you're competent enough to use the equipment and that you you understand how it works and you take precautions with it. Um, and and as long as you can do that, then usually, like I don't know, I I equipment operated when I was 19, and I didn't even know how to run equipment. I started draining oil out of cars and shit, and then one day they wanted me to move a car with a loader, and I was like, well, I don't know how to fucking use that, but I'll give it a shot. And within a week, I was doing it. If you can get lucky and you can find something like that, then uh, you don't really need to be ticketed to find somewhere to work. Because if you're on private property, you don't need a ticket at all, right? Uh, I just want to continue to learn this to the best of my ability, pass... But then drive an auto semi. Yeah, a lot of guys do that. A lot of guys prefer auto. It depends, though. We actually... I find our drivers are kind of 50-50. Some of them really love autos, and some of them fucking hate them. But, I mean, it, it makes your day easier, so I don't know why you're complaining, right? <laughs> I understand we're doing it in a manual because they don't want us to have auto-restricted on our CDO. And that makes sense, you know. Um, and it, it, I think you'll be a lot more happy with it once you've finished and you can look at it in hindsight and say okay i have this skill if i want to expand upon it i can if i need to use it i will um but you know still sit where you're comfortable obviously right then again where where you are i don't know do most uh do most most places run auto where you are do most run stick is it kind of a 50 50 because i know here where the majority of our units are stick shifts Almost everywhere there's stick shifts, but depending on what you're running and where you're running it, like I guess I'm talking highway tractors. Um, but if you if you're running like a a class three, like a body loaded truck or something, um, that's usually not the case. They're almost always automatic. So 
it depends on what you do but yeah no, I know I get what you're saying it you should be able to um, excuse me you should be able to just take an auto one which wait, wait, wait now now that you say that um do you and this might be an, an ignorant question so my bad can't be are you from the UK just, I noticed you said, uh, you talked about the auto-restricted CDL. Isn't that a United Kingdom thing? Where you have your, for regular licensing as well, auto-restricted uh, and then your, your manual licensing? Most places will pay you to learn how to run equipment, literally. I mean, technically speaking, all my hours on the job were, I mean, I, I know what you mean. They'll actually pay you to go do the, the courses, but... Uh, I mean, hell, even a lot of the time I'd go to work and I'd just spend hours messing around in the thing and I was getting paid to do it because, well, he's, uh, he's learning his way around the equipment, right? I don't think so. I think it's US too. Okay, I'm from the US. I thought you were from the US, but then once you said that, I was, uh, I was second guessing myself. Um... But yeah, that's that's interesting. Here, I don't believe we have such a thing. Maybe I'm wrong though. Like I said, I don't have my I don't have my class one. I haven't uh, I haven't gone through formal training. I just know how to do it because I I work on them and I have to move them around. It's fun though. <laughs> Uh, when you have a big yard to run around in, anyway. When you don't have a big yard and you're not really confident in what you're doing, it's pretty terrifying, actually. It's more terrifying once you've hit something. <laughs> Before you've hit something, it's it's not that scary, because you're like, oh, I won't. And then you hit something, and you're like, oh, fuck me. Now, now I'm just worried every time I pull something around the yard. Am I going to clip something? Meanwhile, when I had, like, not really a clue what I was doing beforehand... And I was just ripping around, backing trains up and stuff. I I wasn't concerned. I was I was just <laughs> I was just vibing. But it's a, it's one of those things. It's a it's a caution that you should probably have anyway, just as like a healthy exercise of uh, restraint when it comes to how you run the equipment, not being a dumbass with it. But anyway, I'm on a fat tangent. Now I'm interested to see after the after the stream, unless anybody wants to look it up. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm gonna have to go online and see if uh, we have auto restricted up in the old North Country. Thousand encounters for this phase. I'm not trying to rant, I just would prefer to do auto after passing. I have less to worry about when there's already so much to be cautious of, you know? Oh, for sure. No, and I, I totally understand that. And I, I will say it just... You know, it, to me, it makes more sense teach a guy in an auto first, maybe, and then kind of graduate them onward, but... I guess you could also take that and say, um... Like you, you could kind of run with that in the same respect for how they teach mathematics in a school. But, if you recall, in school when they were teaching you mathematics, generally speaking, they would always teach you the hard way first and then give you the shortcut after. Granted, I guess this is a little different because there's you're not teaching me a shortcut, it's just I don't have a clutch to fuck with anymore. Uh... And I guess it does give that base understanding of how what you're using works. I, I will always be a, a proponent of... Is proponent the right word? I don't know. I'll always be a supporter of manual transmissions in automotive vehicles anyway. Like actual passenger vehicles. Simply because uh, in my mind it's a lot safer because it requires you to pay a lot more attention. Uh, but I guess not everybody. Thank you, Advocator. Is Proponent the inverse of that? I feel like it is. But thank you. Advocator is a very good word for that. 
And running equipment is not, yeah, I see, I can't speak on a broad spectrum because I haven't ran like a ton of equipment. I've ran a lot of forklifts, loaders. Um, I think I ran a baler once or twice. Oh my god, why am I so fucking tired? I wasn't even yawning until like a couple minutes ago, and I was good all day. But other than, yeah, forklift, loader, um, a baler. I think I've really ran anything else. Like, I never ran a, never ran a skid steer. I never ran a, a crane. Never ran, like, a backhoe. But if they're anything like how me learning a loader was, then I, I will level with you, yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Kind of like playing a game. <laughs> a proponent is of a proponent of one who makes a proposition or proposes something. A proponent of I that confused me reading that. I, I don't know why. A proponent of one who makes a proposition or proposes something. Okay, okay, cool. Oh, is! Okay. I I was... A proponent is one who makes... Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. So, if I'm a proponent for... Uh, never mind. I don't have the mental capacity to even try to... <laughs> even try to put that in a sentence right now. I'm a proponent of more game cubes. Everybody should have 16 cubes. And then we'd all have more shinies. I guess then we'd be in shiny inflation. Then again, that's kind of what's happened with uh, Scarlet and Violet. No, I, I, I got you. I uh, I should have been able to read through that, but today's been a day. I'm just tired. Yes, GameCube socialism. You get 16, and you get 16, and you get 16. But no more and no less. <laughs> uh, China would love that proposition. Except for the fact that I feel like they probably don't want people playing GameCubes, given how much of the internet isn't even accessible there. Yeah, let's uh, let, let, let's make that a commonplace, um, a commonplace ideology. A GameCube for one is a GameCube for all. So, like, if you can end up with an idea for a video and asked us about what we thought of it, you'd be the proponent. True, true, true. I am proposing something, opening myself to a response or judgment. Love it. They don't like people playing video games there. Yeah, I, I, I see, I didn't know that specifically, but that wouldn't shock me. Um, I mean, it, let's be real, do they like people doing anything in China? That's good for the people that live there? I don't know. Doesn't... I genuinely don't know. Haven't been there, but I haven't heard much good. I ain't sure on my GameCubes, and you ain't taking mine away to give people other GameCubes. This is Berta, don't you touch my cubes. <laughs> uh, honestly? I, uh, <laughs> I relate pretty hard to that. <laughs> uh, I broke my back for these goddamn cubes, and you think you're gonna take them the fuck away? Get off my back, bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, their backs, their legs, their arms, every other part of them that, you know, is any, any usable muscle, ligament, tendon, bone. Yeah, especially children. They really like laboring children over there. Which, frankly, is... Yeah. I'm not gonna get into that. Me no likey. How many do you have, Jack? I have one black and one XD. The XD GameCubes are so goaded. And don't get me wrong, I really wish the design was better on them. But I like the non-removable special edition jewel. It's sick.
Not true at all, man. A huge portion of their economy is the money generated from mobile games. It's just shy of one third of the domestic part. Oh, I said park it. <laughs> Market. So is it like, is a huge part of that number based on microtransactions or? Holy fuck. I didn't know you had four. How did I not know this? Fuck, why aren't you quad hunting with me? All you need is four converters, a capture card, a multi-viewer. And you could use your laptop for it. No doubt. Oh! I kicked my desk with my other PC. Yeah, that, that makes sense. What about, like, regular... Like, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, is there a lot of that in China, or is it mostly mobile? I remember seeing something about a guy, maybe it was in Japan and not China. But a guy that had, like, 30 phones for Pokemon Go. Which, Jesus Christ, but... To each their own. The iconic purple lunchbox. I love my purple lunchbox. The indigo cube is a blessing. Still my favorite, probably. I like the XD one just because it it's a Pokemon edition GameCube, but otherwise, I, uh, I think the indigo is pretty mint. Those poor people. Yeah, I... Uh, oh God, I couldn't even imagine living in a place like that where I didn't really have much control over my own freedom or... And I mean... I don't know. I just, I really feel for people who are in those situations and... have to live a regular life or what they can of a regular life in those places that are so restrictive to opportunity for the individual. Indigo is bay. Indigo is love, I say. Indigo is life. Please tell me you get that reference. If you don't, I'll probably cry. Um, no shiny. From what I understand, it's mostly mobile because of Chinese government having wild internet rules, but in saying that, I'm not 100% sure about it. Well, if we just quit Fucking yawning, holy shit. <laughs> um. Oh, I had a total point there, and then I just lost it. Oh, what the hell was it now? Um. It was something to do about, like, the, the widespread use of mobile phones there, but I don't remember how I was going to support that statement. Oh, uh, TikTok. I mean, clearly they support internet usage to some extent, right? And large use of mobile devices. Um, I guess maybe not, though. The Chinese government could just, or whoever in China owns it, could just have ownership and um, still deprive the use of said social platform. Um, or deprive the people who want to use that social platform in that country of that use. Wow, say that five times fast. Yeah, that is exactly what I, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was alluding to. I wasn't sure though, because it, frankly, I don't, I haven't done the research on that. I don't, I don't even use TikTok personally. I have a TikTok I made for the YouTube channel, which I haven't posted to yet because I'm a lazy bitch who hasn't edited anything. And I will use it at some point, but uh, on a regular basis, I don't. I haven't used TikTok since like 2019. It's been a while. They have their own TikTok. What we have access to is much different than what they have access to. Fairly sure it's the same as YouTube. 
I don't even, like... I don't even understand how that works. How does that... How does that, how does that work? How does that, how does, how do you manage to put a whole country under that level of control? And this, please understand that this is a rhetorical question. I, I understand it. It's just, it baffles me is all. TikTok, villain, what are you waiting for? Well, um, story time. So, I guess I'm not really waiting. As far as putting stuff on TikTok for the channel, um, I don't have an excuse, I just haven't done it yet, and I really should. Because I'm sure I've hindered the, the growth of this channel to an extent by not using other social media platforms as much as I could, or if at all. Um, but I actually, like, I, I had TikTok before, and I still have it, I just don't use it. Um, the reason being, back in 2019, I made a TikTok with my one friend, um, like a TikTok account. And we made a whole bunch of TikToks, and we actually, like, right off the bat, started getting some really good traction. Short of the long, within, like, a week or two of posting TikToks, I had, I think it was, like, 85,000 followers. Uh, however, the issue was, like, I, I was putting out videos that would get between a quarter million to, uh, you know, one and a quarter million views. Which was awesome, but the content I was making had absolutely nothing to do with anything I enjoyed. Um, I just destroyed shit for videos. I, I destroyed vehicles. Um, which was cool, but it wasn't sustainable, especially because at the time it was my job. And I didn't like my job. <clears throat> so. Well, I did, but I mean, I was making like $19 an hour. And that's Canadian, so that's less if you're from the U.S. It's like 16 or $17 an hour, I think. But I'm going to get back into it. I will, I will. I still, uh, I still have the account, I just don't use it. And it's got about 20,000 less followers than it used to. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna make some food and then watch some downshifting vids. Peace and love to you all. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Campy. I do appreciate that. I, uh... Yeah, hope you have fun with that. Hope you have some good food. Thanks for stopping by. $19 an hour in this economy is not sustainable. No, not even close. And granted, like, this was 2019, and I was living with my parents. Um... But... Still, not even close to sustainable. Like, I... I'm not gonna disclose on camera exactly what I make, but I make a substantial amount larger than that now, uh, given that I've changed industries. And, uh, I mean... I do well enough to provide for myself and to save some money, but, uh, I mean, I, it, it's insane how tight you have to be on things, and how... I don't know, just how hard a person genuinely has to work to to keep that money in their pocket. How how much you have to restrict what you do based on just the general cost of... I mean, I guess it's cost of living, uh, technically. But more specifically, I'm referencing just to do things. Just to go out and have an experience, you know. If I want to go on a vacation, or if I want to go somewhere... <laughs> excuse me. If I want to go somewhere to go do some sort of local activity like I don't know like axe throwing or fucking bowling or um it's just not it's not as affordable as it should be or used to be like I I was going through my parents uh, house because I, I was unpacking or I was packing some shit to take to my house uh, just to kind of clear out their area a bit and I found a receipt and I ended up keeping it because, holy shit, but, um, I had a receipt from 2016 for McDonald's, so when I was in high school, and, sure, thanks Jen, yeah, I know, I hope so. 
Sorry, my wife just popped in and was talking to me. Um, anyway, so I found this receipt from 2016. Um, so like I said, when I was in high school, getting some McDonald's. And I was trying to think about this uh, a little bit before. It's like, how did I afford so much McDonald's when I didn't have a job? How did that make sense? Uh, and the answer was quite simply, it cost $1.69 to get a fucking McDouble? No shit! I, I, you can get it whenever you want. A buck sixty nine. When has a buck sixty nine ever been fuck all in the last twenty years? Two thousand eight. That's about it. Now, meanwhile, I go to McDonald's and a, a, a McDouble's like, I think they're three thirty nine. Maybe more. It's I don't know. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> they don't even have the value menu anymore. Yeah, and I, I guess I've, now that you say that, I've never really thought about that. They don't have like an actual label. This is the value menu. They just have. Oh no no no! That's not true. They call them value picks. Um, but it's not a value. The only thing I will say is they kind of brought back the the five dollar meal deal Which is kind of the same thing it was but now it's a small drink and small fries and it's 550 I don't know they can go fuck their hat I've just been making food at home recently because it's not worth it unless I don't have time to cook I don't go to McDonald's, period, anymore. It's too pricey. It genuinely is. The only time it's not is when... Like, I don't know. I could spend $10 and... curb a hunger craving for, like, a couple hours. Like, I'll get two Junior Chickens and a McDonald's. Oh, I guess if you're not from Canada, you don't know what a Junior Chicken is. Um, I'll get a McDouble... Or two McDoubles and a fucking... Well, just three McDoubles, I guess, for the sake of saying it. Um, and it's, it's just over ten bucks, but I mean... I look back and it's like... I used to be able to get five. Or six, even. Like, how does that... This is me off. Also baffles me, how was I able to buy a burger for less than two dollars? That is... Unfathomable to me. Last time I went to McDonald's, Ty and I got a wrap and a smoothie each. It was 33 fucking. Jesus. It's genuinely cheaper to eat at restaurants. And I have a lot of people that I've said this to. And there's many that won't agree with me. But, but, but. Um, in the city I live in, there's this one place. It's a local restaurant. It's been established for quite a bit. But. Ooh. That's not good. Yawns after yawns after yawns. Um, so you can go there, and you can get this thing. You may be familiar. It's called a, a, a blossoming or a blooming onion. Well, that was an instant encounter on number one. Uh, but it's like a deep fried onion with some sauces that they cut up and... It's, it's pretty big and it's yummy. You can get one here for like, it's like nine bucks. And it, it's quite a bit of food, uh, and you can get like a couple. Dry, uh, and, uh, I don't know. I guess when I say it now, it sounds kind of expensive. But it, when I get like the dine out experience, and I can get an appetizer for a similar price as well, and you know, like I can get a full burger meal at a restaurant for like 15, 16 bucks. It it really. I guess here here's a better example, and I, and I should have opened with this. I can go to McDonald's and I can get a Big Mac meal for like $10 or I can go to insert whatever restaurant name here and most places I go you get a f actual burger meal so the same thing you get a full side you get the burger you get a drink your drinks are free refills it's a bigger burger and it's like 14 to $18 tell me why the price is pretty much the same as fast food, but I'm getting a better f and bigger fucking deal at somewhere that's supposed to have less inherent value. Does that make sense? 
Because to me, it really fucking doesn't. And if anybody could explain to me how it does, I would love to hear it. Price, health, and taste-wise, I totally agree. Totally agree. I can literally get full four rolls of sushi, two spring rolls, and an imported beer for 33 And exactly, like, so <laughs> why am I going to settle for this meat paste mass-produced shit when I can get that? You're exactly right, Charizard. It is. Fast food has become a scam. The only way I get fast food nowadays, 209,000 encounters, is, um... Is if I get coupons. I always, if if my wife ever mentions wanting fast food, the first thing I say is, all right, check for deals. And we both have a certain amount of apps on our phone, you know, like the typical uh, A&W, McDonald's, Subway, Burger King, Harvey's. Um, and we'll go through, and if there's nothing on sale, guess what? We're making food at home, because it doesn't make sense. And I hope that this starts to catch on. For, uh, for restaurants, like I hope they, they start to understand. I hope they start to understand how much business they are losing or are going to be losing from these price hikes. But uh, the worst part is, is there's always going to be people that don't care, and they're just going to buy the stuff because they don't want to. Uh, one over. Uh, they're always going to buy this stuff because they don't want to make food. Or for whatever reason. I mean, everybody has their their um, their justification, but only fast food I get in A&W is A&W because their breakfast is elite. Uh, yeah, I used to get A&W breakfast when I roofed uh, like five, six years ago. I really don't know why I'm yawning. I'm not tired. I don't want to go to sleep. Uh, but A&W a is top tier. But even even this, so, so I'm just going to pop some peppermint oil on ye old mustache here. So I can stay the fuck awake. Or stay from yawning, anyway. Ugh. So one thing I really, 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 really like from A&W is the chubby chicken burger. Now... I often, if they have a deal for it, will go and get one. But the other day, I was feeling, I was feeling savvy, and I went to the grocery store, and I picked myself up a, a, a box or not a box, a bag or not even a bag, you know, just the regular containers you get where you get fresh meat in, like the styrofoam tray things. I got a tray of chicken breasts, and it was eleven bucks. So, eleven dollars. And I go home, I have a deep fryer, I got a marketplace for $25, it's a full size home, a full home size deep fryer. Um, I have a gallon of vegetable oil that I spent 15 bucks on, but you can use it like five or six times if you clean it properly and you don't burn it. Um, so you take all of this into account. The other stuff, I mean, it's basically just spices you keep at your house and some, some buttermilk, which is like a couple dollars. So you take all this into account. I can make like six chicken burgers that genuinely are just as good. Like I, when I made these the other day and my mouth was watering, they're just as good. They're fresh. It's in the comfort of my own home. And I spent effectively like a fifth of what I would if I just went to A&W to get it, which... <laughs> It's kind of unfortunate because it's it's delicious and it's enticing, but at the same time, I just I can't justify that when I can go home and put in just a little bit more effort and make something equally as delicious. Like yeah, I've gotta I've gotta cut the chicken and I have to tenderize it and season it and let it sit for a little bit uh, before I deep fry it. But it, it's it's genuinely not that much work. It's not. Like I've said, fast food has its place. Um, when I'm busy and I don't have the time to cook, I'll get fast food and I don't really feel much of a way about it because I want to eat and I just don't have the time. But other than that, it's a scam. You literally get, f yeah, three for the price of one. It, it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to say no. <laughs> like, I, uh... 
I can go and spend more money and have instant gratification, or I can go out, get some stuff, take a little bit of time, have a delicious meal at home, and then also have that delicious meal for work tomorrow? Like, excuse me? That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Thank you very much. Love it. God. I was just about to say this is making me hungry, but I sat back and considered my... Uh, considered my statement again, and I'm actually not. I suppose that's a good thing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we eat before stream. So that I can't make myself hungry with shit I say. Darth Riven, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing fantastic. Happy to see you here. Uh, would I recommend hacking a 3DS? Been thinking about doing that. So, he he here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, hey Deco, welcome to the stream, how's it going? Hope you're doing fantastic today, what are you up to? Um, I would say... It, it depends on your reasoning for what if you want to hack a 3DS. So, I say the main benefit to hacking a 3DS is the fact that you can take uh, DS game saves and you can back them up and you can actually play so say if I have a heart gold save file I can have three different save files on the go I don't believe there's another way to back up saves otherwise though I mean let's be real and I'm just just for legal reasons I'm not supporting any of this at all um, but if you if you hack a 3ds then all of these expensive games behind a paywall you uh, you've not You've not need to pay for them anymore, so. <laughs> uh, in short, yes, I would recommend it. Just make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I'm not sure exactly how uh, how tough the process is, but I'm I'm sure it's something that could be uh, could be done quite simply. I know Jack will be able to tell you. Um, hey, Deco, thank you very much for subscribing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It uh, it means a lot. Hope you know that. Uh, I'm doing amazing, just wanted to find a Pokemon streamer to fall asleep to, because I'm shattered <laughs> and it's 1am, true. Where Whereabouts are you that it's 1am? Are you in, uh, oh, you must be like, Australia, New Zealand type area, or w would I be incorrect to say that? Um, the UK, okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Well, I'm happy I could be here for, uh, for, uh, how can I say, I... <laughs> I, I don't know what you'd call that. What would you call that? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad to be a, a soothing voice for you to fall asleep to. Or at least hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you so much for stopping by. But, uh, do you have any shiny hunts going on at the moment? Or is that just something that you, you kind of like to watch people do in your pastime? Whereabouts in the UK? Like, I, um, no, I don't want to, like, not where exactly do you live, what city, what's your zip code, what's your social, but, like, <laughs> where, whereabouts are you, uh, are you located? I've been to the UK in a couple places. Uh, that's the only, only reason I ask. Charizard, actually, you can't get any of the games from Nintendo anymore. Oh, shit, I'm missing a lot of this. Really? Why, why is that? I don't even know. I've been doing doing it to small ant, but I've watched all his Pokemon videos. Well, I mean, when you... when The thing is, a small ant makes, like, all challenge stuff, right? So, the unfortunate part about that is that it takes so long to actually make these challenge videos and, uh, you know, edit it and produce the content for it. Granted, small ants... Smallatch is large enough, he's got an editor. He, I guarantee he's not doing any of his editing, but these challenges still take a while too, right? So, that's why I leave all my VODs up. If anyone wants to see them, they can. Um, while my lazy ass actually makes some videos <laughs> that are <laughs> gonna be coming out soon, I swear. I keep saying it, but they will. 
Oh yeah, I forgot the eShop shut down. Sorry, that was a that was a stupid moment on my part. But yeah, you can still buy used, but that's not from Nintendo, so you're right. Yeah, I guess that's that's still third party. I, I get what you're saying. I misunderstood. Um, and yeah, sorry, Jack, I, I didn't respond to what you said there. I actually, I passed 100 subs last stream. It was just before it started, like literal seconds before it started. It was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, just a secondary, hey, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Um, it's awesome to finally hit that three digits, and I'm excited for four. Memberships and monetizations, here we come. <laughs> sooner than later, sooner than later. All the worst place in the UK, or with the highest crime rate, Bradford. And it's funny you say that, where I live in Canada has like one of the worst crime rates too. <laughs> so I feel you, don't uh, don't feel too bad about that. What, what, what can you tell me about Bradford? I'm not too familiar. I wouldn't even think about hacking if it weren't for the eShop shutting down. I, I take it you're, uh, like, uh, are a lot of the games you want to play, were they uh, digital exclusives, or are you just kind of preferential to having all of your content on your console at once and not having to carry physical cartridges. Oh, uh, where are we here? At the moment, I've been hunting on Ruby and Emerald for the time being and got both shiny mudkips on the pair of them going for Shroomish. Nice! I, uh, I really, really enjoy Hoenn. I... So, I guess just as a quick window into this channel, so, I am currently doing the Shiny Living decks for Fire Red and Leaf Green. However, I actually have all of the games necessary to also do a 16 game Hoenn Shiny decks and a Johto Shiny decks. So, eventually, that'll be something we do around here as well. I don't know exactly when we'll be starting that up, but uh, I'd like to do that kind of soon ish. I don't know. Well, one, one step at a time, but I. Uh, I definitely respect the Hoenn shiny grind. And an emerald, too. That's gotta be a, a toughie. Yeah, have you seen the cost of used Nintendo games? Yeah, but on the on the 3DS, like if it's if it's specifically 3D console, like 3D at like X, Y, Alpha Sapphire, Omega Ruby. As far as I knew, I thought those were pretty pretty inexpensive still, but I could be wrong. I haven't bought those in a long time. Yeah, frankly, I plan on modding a couple of my 3DS just to get Bank and Transporter, plus the Virtual Console Pokemon games. Yeah, I got I got uh, Crystal VC um, before it shut down a while back, but I only have one 3DS. I got to get another one so I can mod it. I want to have one that's not modded, so that's my that's my move. But I can definitely understand why a guy would do that. Road to 1K, you betcha. 1K and beyond, my friend. 1k and beyond. Uh, I keep losing my spot here. Super easy to mod. Big fan of modding the DS and 3DS. PSP mods go hard too. Isn't it all soft modding, essentially? Like, you don't gotta open it up at all, do you? Could be wrong, though. Haven't done it before. Still willing to go through it because I want the official games. Just can't get the Poke Transporter and Pokeball. So, do they do they still function on, like on a hacked 3DS? If you were to uh, if you were to download them, like are the servers still up for them to work? I guess yeah, they must be. But once servers shut down, then it doesn't matter, right? And then they just don't work regardless. Just Pokebox and Transporter, that's it. Yeah, Emerald was a motherfucker and a half with the broken RNG. I, I tried a bunch when I was a kid on Emerald, but I... I mean, I was only single console hunting, to be fair. But I never had the patience. I was always just considering the fact that RNG could have me in the worst possible scenario ever. And uh, I, I, I may or may not ever hit a shiny frame, so... I, I always stuck to hunting in Ruby and Sapphire, but... Emerald, maybe, eventually. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, those Gen 6 and 7 games are going up. Really? Really? How much are they? What are they worth now? And let me make sure I still have X and Y. <laughs> oh, yeah. We good. I just need Omega Ruby. I had it, and I don't know where it went. I think I lost it in my move. 
and Soul Silver, but that one's always been expensive. Unfortunately, I have one copy of Crystal VC, but I want more for the Celebi hunt. True. I I was kind of thinking the same thing, but I've got like eight copies of Crystal, like physical copies of Crystal. So I'm going to do the, what is it, the Palm Egg or the Coin Case glitch? One of the two. I'm going to do a glitch on one file. I'm going to duplicate the file onto all of the cartridges and just do it that way. Well, I have to do it twice, because some are Japanese. I have four that are English and four that are Japanese, so... I'll have to do the mod on both. Or, the, not the mod, the, the glitch, sorry. I'm not one to mod Pokemon games. And I'm only doing Gen 3 because I enjoy getting a shiny more due to the higher shiny rates, and then Gen 3 is my favorite gen. I, t I couldn't agree more. That is exactly why I do what I do here. Um, hence why I run so many units at once, because I absolutely love the increased odds, but unfortunately, I mean, uh, you can't see it, but on the bottom right there we have a little history of uh, our last shinies and how long they took. The one previous to this phase took 36,000 encounters, and that was that was with 16 consoles. <laughs> so... I, uh, I love it, but now it's starting to scare me a little bit, because I've never had a phase that long until then. And the one before that was 24k, so... Jeez. Scary, scary. It's all soft modding, but playing ROM hacks on original software goes hard. True. I never even thought about that, honestly. <laughs> Bank still works. Yeah, I just want it for 3DS transfer, not to my Switch. I don't care about that. Yeah, I can't really... I don't really think I have much of a reason to want to put any of my Pokemon onto a Switch. I, like, I, I, don't, I don't play Scarlet or Violet enough, really, to be too, too concerned about it. Legends Arceus, sure. I think that'd be a vibe. Arceus, Arceus, however you say it. I spent 45 for a loose copy of X a month ago. Seriously? Fuck. I should have been buying more copies when they were cheap. I was getting them for like 20 bucks Canadian. And those can't even be faked, so well, I could have gotten a bunch too. It is what it is. Yeah man, I think you overpaid personally. I was gonna say that does seem pretty high, but I I don't know. I've been out of the market for those for a while, because I just haven't had a reason to purchase any of them. Bought them once, didn't worry about it. Uh, I don't know, Jack. A lot of listings on eBay go higher. Yeah, but the thing is, is are we talking sold listings on eBay? Because if they're not sold, then that number doesn't really matter too, too much. People are always asking an arm and a leg for shit. Doesn't always sell, though. I was going to buy a loose copy of Soul Silver for 50 quid, but then I had to wait because somebody else bought... Oh, I'm sorry. That is, that is pretty cheap, because that's like... I want to say it's like 70 Canadian. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Another one will come up, though. Just make sure, of course, um, that if you are buying one, you know how to tell if it's authentic, because people are not kind. They will swindle you if they can. Oh, and I play repo copies for the GBA cartridges and Telegon 4 real copies. Okay, so uh, <laughs> what I just said is moot. You you, you know what you're looking for, so that's, that's totally fair. Um... One thing I will ask is, are you are you dead set on playing in the language that you... Well, I guess no. If you're playing... Yeah, you might as well just play a repo copy if you want to play English. Because, yeah, you could get Japanese or... I guess... Yeah, Japanese copies would still be pointless. Because then you can't even read it. And, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> Weird, but I guess with the eShop closing down, yeah. Well, you guys have a good night. Thanks for the advice. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate that. Hope you have a fantastic evening, and uh, hope to see you in the future, Darth. Take her easy, my friend. They were $20 a while ago, but since eShop closed, they've skyrocketed. Missed my chance. Ah, you never missed your chance. You just gotta give it some time. There's always somebody selling something cheap. I've learned that. Hell, uh, six months ago I bought a copy of Pokemon Emerald for $70 Canadian shipped. Um, and I will show it to you. It's not, like, A, it is legitimate. One trillion percent, it is legitimate. 
Not only that, but it is in immaculate condition. That was $70. And that is, that's the cartridge that I currently do our VR Nuzlocke on. Yeah, you just, just gotta know where to look. I was on the internet way too much, bartering with way too many people. <laughs> I prefer real EU copies, so when I manage to find loose copies, then I'll definitely snag them. That's fair. I will say, I thought European copies would be cheaper when I was searching for my extras for this shiny, shiny hunting setup. And I was surprised. Some of them are actually, like, a little bit more at times I saw. So I feel free there. I hope you can find some lesser expensive copies soon. But yeah, that was uh, that was the best deal I've ever gotten on. Well, no, that's not true. I think I sent um, Jack of Spades is gonna be my he's gonna be my um, my vouching guy here, um, and if he remembers anyway. I bought. A couple of bundles like a year or so ago and I got it was three fire reds two leaf greens a Zelda minish cap and something else all for like two it was like 225 Canadian total this was between two purchases one guy had two fire reds and a leaf green and the other guy had the rest of them um, but I, I don't know, some people just want to get rid of stuff and they, they want the first no bullshit person that's going to give them money. So uh, you definitely can get very, very lucky, but diligence is key. I got my copy of Emerald for some Magic the Gathering cards I got for free. Lots of people are willing to trade. That's right, that's right. That was a really good, uh, that was a really good deal. I'm proud of you for that one. That was a good move. And a good place to look is Vinted. But then again, you need to properly look to see if they're real. Vinted? I've never heard of Vinted. Can you, can you explain that to me, please? Is that like a, is that like a online marketplace or something? Bro, that GBA bundle made me want to hit you. I was mad I didn't see that before you. <laughs> you know, I feel bad because I, I I could tell when I sent you a picture of it that like your response was kind of like a fuck you response. Not like literally fuck you, but like I, a an envious fuck you. Um, which is fair. I have too many copies of games. But uh, you can't tell me I don't use them. Can't tell me I don't use him, but I, I did still barter him down quite a bit. I think I got him like 30% down on the price on the fire reds. I don't know, it was two fire reds, a minish cap, and a leaf green. And then the other guy had the rest of them. It was two copies. It was a fire red and something else. Uh, but I, I, I bartered him down pretty good from his regular price, too. <clears throat> but, I mean, I, I definitely... Uh, I empathize with that. There's been... I forget, but I know there's been a couple of things that you've found. Oh yeah, like fucking black and white... Uh, it was like black or white 2, or heart gold, soul silver, something like that. But you, you found them at work, and that, that had me pretty envious too. I was like, no way, dude. It's like a $200 game, and this dude just snags it. For free. <laughs> but I've had my luck too. I mean, I got a CIB copy of black 2 for 100 bucks like six months ago so I shouldn't be saying much we all find our deals we all find them if you look it up on your phone it's used to buy secondhand stuff like clothes but then again people sell games you know, it's available to download out of the UK but if it's download uh, I fixed into my switches seeing as I don't have a job and the income I make is all from it oh that's cool yeah I, I I don't know if that's a thing outside of the UK. Uh, it, it very well may be. In Canada, I don't... I don't know. I'll have to check. I've definitely never heard of that. Here we have... Uh, we use fa Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji. Primarily. Um, is I take it that's kind of like a... Um, oh, what do they call it? Oh, I'm forgetting. There's an American store that's kind of like that. But you... 
So do you buy switches broken and then flip them on Vinted and that's how you that's how you make your money? If so, I mean you you must be uh you must be getting a pretty good profit margins on that, I imagine. And where do you get your switches that you fix? That's nothing. I got a CIB copy of White 2 and Black 2 for $80. Oh my god. To be fair, to be fair, 2012. Things were different. But that is still that is still crazy. That was genuinely still under market value then. <laughs> so Oh, that is that's a lucky one. The one thing I will say I'm happy about no matter what, above and beyond all things, is that I got my copy of Pokemon Pokemon White when it came out and I genuinely got the Victini event, Victini event, however you say it, um, in the first month that it came out and I, I still have it to this day. Same with on my heart gold, I have a spike-eared Pikachu, a spike -eared Pichu. I have a Pikachu colored Pichu, uh, I have Ash's Pikachu, all the shinies from then, like the Suicune, Entei, Raikou, oh, I, I, I'm so happy I have all my old event Pokemon. I didn't get all the cool ones, but to me the spikier Pichu is the best one by far. You can't even trade it out of the game actually, it's kind of unfortunate, but 240 to 280 for complete in box, that's stupid. I'm glad I have just one of each. I don't think I will ever want more than one of each. And if I do, they'll be Japanese. I just wanted one of each English copy, and that's that, that's that's it. Um, Game Boy Advance is a little different. I kept finding copies cheap, so I kept buying them because I know I won't have that opportunity ever again in my life. Like I have two English emeralds in mint condition, and I know I will never get them. For the prices I paid again, and that's why I clutch onto them very, 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 very dearly. Well, I buy broken ones, Joy Cons, and Switches, all of eBay, Facebook, Vinted, and then I buy cheap parts on AliExpress. Uh, but the higher quality, buy. Wait. Then I buy cheap parts on AliExpress, but the higher quality. Oh, I see the higher quality, cheaper parts. Uh, fix them and resell them. So surely. I guess when you're you're just looking for people who had like do you buy a lot of bulk deals or someone's like I have like five broken switches and I just want to get them out of the way um, or how yeah how does that work and then as far as um, repairing joy cons and stuff do you find that's much of a pain is there a learning curve to that really or is that uh, kind of just once you once you figure it out it's not as hard as it seems I was disgusted looking at used Pokemon game prices at a local game shop. 175 for Chris. Jesus Christ. That's just, that is genuinely disgusting. And stuff like that, yet again, is why I'm so happy that in the past five years, I was diligent in rebuilding my whole collection. Like, I... I think one of my better ones, I got a copy of Crystal, I met a guy in front of a mall. Um, 50 bucks. Canadian cash. That was actually no, I I e transferred him, but uh, that one that one made me super happy. That was still when it was going for a little bit more, um, but I God, I don't even want to talk about how expensive they're getting. I'm just happy I have what I have. Um, where else was I here? Where else was I? A man after my own heart, Deco. I fix consoles for fun, I don't sell them, but I've done a fair bit of work on handheld PS2s, Wii's, and Xbox 360s. I really find it so interesting to take apart consoles and fix them. If oh, Jack, you got a brand new friend here. You got a brand new friend here. You got another console fixer. Yeah, if anyone in the chat's curious, Jack is Jack is huge on fixing and modding old consoles. Something he really, really likes. Um... Where do your emeralds go in the event of your death and your will? Um, honestly, <laughs> if we're talking about games and my will, we have a lot more to worry about than my emeralds. I could pull something out for you right now that blows my emeralds right out of the fucking water. Beyond, like, not even close. Emeralds are not even a speck. But, in short, they're, they're going to you. <laughs> 
Uh, geez, I'm losing myself here. So I gotta take a second just to read chat here and catch up. My apologies, guys. You do buy bulk? Yeah, I, I take it that's probably how you make the majority of your income then. Um, me too, man. I also find it really relaxing. It's a great winter hobby and honestly fairly easy. Heck yeah, I'd love to hear it. Um, I, I have never really tried it. I, Switch modding kind of scares me, but now that they're getting older, I would like to try. Hey, it's all good, KT. No, don't worry about it. I'm happy to see you. Welcome to the stream. 32 Joy-Cons I need to fix. 170... 170 quid and then another 50 for the parts I managed to fix the majority of them 20 so you're essentially I don't know the math on that but th those are insane margins even if the parts are a little uh, expensive like th those are really good margins um, hey thank you very much for the uh, congratulations KT it's uh, it's definitely nice it, I, I feel Feel awesome not looking at just the two numbers anymore. We're growing from here. We're growing from here. <laughs> and with the Joy Cons, it's very annoying to fix due to ribbon cables and stuff. I've broken a few and lost a bit of money. Is it mostly ribbon cables or is there like small little plastic parts that tend to break off or springs that are hard to set? 210,000 that was, by the way, flat for the series. What screen was the Pidgey? I told you I'd be back. And cheers. Hey, happy to see you, Jevin. Thanks for stopping by again. Much obliged. Happy to see you once again lurking around. The, well, I guess you're not lurking, but <laughs> chilling around the stream. What, what's uh, what's going on today? But yeah, it uh, it was screen number two. I was I was pretty shocked. I was I would not have gotten it if it wasn't for Charizard stalling us a little bit at the end of the stream, getting a few more resets out of me, and all of a sudden, boom, bastard pops up. I was pretty happy. <laughs> Uh, now I'm just hoping we see another one and then this time you can actually catch it too well I mean you can see it don't worry we caught the other one uh, I modded one on switch before for one person and I got paid to do it what did they pay you to mod it and um, what kind of mods are we talking just like like a software mod or like physical like new parts, new physical parts. I don't know what, what else you'd call that. <laughs> well, it's ribbons that break m with most Joy Cons. Mostly kids are dropping them or stick drift, but they're normally easy to fix. So, when you're when you're changing, or I guess when you pull a Joy Con apart and it's got stick drift, is it usually like the sensor under the stick that causes it to fail, or how does that? What's usually the issue that leads to that? Because honestly, I'm I'm very unfamiliar. Oh, excuse me, I got a burp coming, it just won't come out. <laughs> Still on the heart gold, soul silver, shiny starter hunt, chilling, relaxing. Hey, happy to hear it. Sounds like a fun time. You are it, it is ridiculous how far you are into that fucking hunt and still nothing. But uh I I uh, I will say, for your sake, I'm hoping that you get your, your totodile. And uh I know you said you'll settle for a Chikorita, but uh We'll, we'll get we'll get something better for you, for sure. I think 50 quid to mod, but all I did was install the mod chip, and that's all they wanted. And then they paid for the mod chip too, I take it? So that was like your, your profit on top? Pretty sure it's being overused and being left in a certain way, but then again, all I do is swap the joystick, and... So does the joystick come separate from, like, whatever sensor it sits on, or is that a one-piece assembly? Because I know on something like an Xbox 360 controller, it's, uh... It's like a... Just the, the stick sits on its own. But that's... It's been years since I've pulled anything like that apart. Only thing I pull apart now is game, like the games themselves, change the batteries, and uh... Advanced SPs I pull apart sometimes, uh, like if I'm doing batteries or... I haven't done a shell in a while, but I'd like to do a shell soon. Do an IPS while I'm at it, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's good that they paid for the chip. So, I mean, fuck, that, that's a pretty good penny just to install the thing. Especially when you know what you're doing, because you do it fast enough, or, sorry. You do it often enough, and then 
I mean, there comes a point where you can do something that takes most people an hour and a half and half an hour. And that's where the profit really rolls in, right? Does this community have a Discord? Because uh, I would love to join. Yes, sir. So, uh, there's two places you can go to access the Discord. One, if you go in the description of this video, you will find a link to the Discord. Um, however, if that doesn't suit your fancy, you can go to the main channel, and in the description there, if you click into the see more part, uh, you will find the link to our community Discord there as well. Thank you very much, I do appreciate that. We, uh, we, we keep as active as we can for a community with like a hundred people. But, uh, no, we're, we're pretty tight-knit. Happy to have you here, that's for sure. Yeah, all I did was solder the chip in and went from there. I guess that's the thing, though, is a lot of people are very uncomfortable soldering. Which I don't blame them. I mean, you do one thing wrong and all of a sudden now you got a short and you got to reflow some shit, right? And, I mean, mostly all I do is I just... Like, I, I have mostly just soldered batteries. I'm not going to pretend like I've done much more, but... It looks tough. Definitely it looks tough. Do any GBA modding deco? No, I haven't seen anything to do with that yet. Uh, do you mean as far as the GBA modding or for the... Um... Oh shit, no, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Never mind, it'll come back to me. I'm a squirrel. I'm a squirrel. SPs are probably my favorite to mod, but I'll show you my SP and GPA, GBA and the cord of the dis. I was just about to ask you what the fuck you were saying, and then when I read it out loud, I got it. <laughs> I was like, dude, the cord? What do you mean? <laughs> Buttery spread. I'm actually shocked you have 16 game cubes. Well, welcome to the stream, Buttery. Happy to see you. Hope you're doing fantastic. And, um... It's funny being that you've been here so long, that's the first time you've said that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it took it took a while to it took a while to get them. That's for sure. They are my my pride and joy. However, well, actually, no, I have one more pride and joy behind me. But these are these are mostly my pride and joy. Oh yes, I've messed up soldering a lot, and I haven't messed up anything to do with boards and stuff. I've messed up my hand big time though. Accidentally rest the iron on the old finger, or what? <laughs> done that before leave you with some nice uh, some nice grilled skin you didn't know that buttery I'm sure buttery did I think this is just a uh, this is a revelation he's having <laughs> give me a sec to join it and I would love to see you. yeah we uh, we've got a few channels in there uh, a lot of us on the in the community or at least a few of us um, have a, a vested interest in plants so there's a, a specific I don't know what you call it the, the thread whatever um, for plants in the discord uh, one for Pokemon one for general chat and then I'm actually forgetting what all is in there but you'll find out <laughs> like I said I uh, my, my mind is quite a forgetful one Oh, that is that is the that is the most flattering insult I've ever received. <laughs> uh, something wasn't coming off, and I've tried a bit too hard, and then I put the actual iron onto my hand. Oh, because you're pulling, and then the iron just when you're pulling, you put the iron towards your hand instead of pulled away. That sucks. But <laughs> I'm shocked you have 16 game cubes and a girlfriend. <laughs> Well, uh, unsurprisingly so, the girlfriend came first. Uh, the cubes came years after. Yeah, m many, many don't get girlfriends that way. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, dude, I was literally replacing the left and right triggers on one of my SPs. I dropped the iron on my foot and it went between my... Oh, my God. Man just deleted the webbing with a single unpinch of the fingers. Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's not good. I've never burnt myself like that with a soldering iron. I have, but it was always like more more similar to what Deco was saying. Um, it wasn't. It, 
was deco right yeah yeah where i kind of like would try to pull and then you end up just inadvertently pushing the iron into your hand um, but i have a little pen iron so it's actually kind of easy to do that the other one i had not so much 3,000 counters, by the way. I should have should have called that out. And honestly, Charizard, I I don't think that joke got enough recognition. That <laughs> that was that was beyond hilarious, honestly. <laughs> um, however, if I were to make any, if I were to refute anything, I would say that I don't have 16 game cubes. I have 17. Get it right. <laughs> I have. Uh, if you're if you're wondering, you can't really see behind me because of how I have everything set up. But um, right here, this is a shelf. It's got all 16 cubes on it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is this is my one that I use for my CRT. You can't tell, but there's a uh, literally right right here at the end of my arm is a little 12 inch CRT from my childhood that I play VHS's on and I play my games through when I'm on my own off stream. Hey, thanks for joining the Discord Deco. I appreciate that. No, it's facts. That is facts. I See, here here's the thing. I may have a girlfriend and 17 game cubes, but nobody said I was getting laid. Um, I, I think it, it's very widespread knowledge that nobody gets put with 17 game cubes. Not, not a single soul. And if you can find any, any remnants of a piece of literature and history that even alludes to such a fact, I will pay you at least five dollars in cash. Throw it in the Discord. <laughs> 16 is just not enough for most women. No, mo most women see 16, and I mean, it it's unfortunate, but they're shallow. They see that, and they're like, honestly, I could do better. My man across the street has 32. Can you match up? And he's even got two 16 by one multi-viewers. He's not even running four 4 by ones so... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you've never owned a GameCube, Deco? Why not? We gotta get you one now. Somebody send this guy a fucking cube. You, you gotta... I, I mean, I guess if you didn't grow up with a cube, though, you probably wouldn't love the games on it, but... Oh, fuck me. The cube. The cube is the ultimate console. The ultimate. More like Game Cuck, am I right? Is that what I should put? You know, I, I did just change my YouTube banner. Uh, should I just change it again and put Game Cuck on the couch? Maybe that would make more sense. A little more fitting for one like myself. I've been wanting to reshell both my DS lights and my GBA. Oh, I, I missed one up there. Oh, there it is. I really wanted to re reshell one of my cubes with the pink shell. That pink shell is sick. And honestly, I, I wouldn't mind doing it take one of mine that's in like one of the worst shape and just spiff her right up that that pink shell was so badass and it continues to be i suppose i should add i'm wanting to reshell both my ds lights and my gba sp i i can't speak much to reshelling ds lights but i'll say the sp if you're if you're doing modding on the stuff you are you'll have no issues and it's definitely w worth it like um, Jack of Spades can attest. He has a, a Game Boy Advance that he modded with an IPS screen, and it looks so good. Like, I run AGS 101s specifically, but the IPS make like it looks so much cleaner than a 101. Yeah, the brightness is there on a 101, but um, oh my god, yeah, get an IPS if you're gonna mod the shell. It's worth the extra like 50 bucks for sure. Evil Billin hunts 32 games at once. Oh my god. You know, I would consider it if I could figure a way to make it look good on stream. I don't think you can hunt more than 16 consoles on stream without it looking weird. I mean, even this is quite a bit, but it, like, I mean, let's be real. If you look at this, I have absolutely 
fuck all for room anywhere on this layout. Like, I, there's more information I want to put on this layout, but I simply can't because... <laughs> tell me where. Tell me where. I'll fucking do it. Just, just show me. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> oh, you get dibs, KT? Well, tell you what. I'll tell you what, once once we hit a thousand subs, maybe we'll do a group Discord fundraiser and we'll get KT and uh, Deco a cube. <laughs> I'm only 17 and I don't work. I've been properly trying to get a job and struggling heavily. Well, hey, props on you. Um, I mean, when I was 17, I didn't have a job. Granted, my parents didn't let me get one because that was a whole situation, but... Um, good on you for, I mean, you're making money anyway, and you're doing pretty, uh, pretty well as far as, like, using an actual skill to make that money, so, you're, you're, you're on your own route to success, just keep treading that path, and you'll get there. If you can conti continue to make money with, uh, the skills you have, doing things you enjoy to do, or you enjoy doing, I mean, you're already further ahead than most people. But 17 and on the uh, on the Gen 3 grind, I love that. I thought I was I was uh, one of the younger fellows as far as fanatics go for this stuff. But I mean, then again, I grew up with it still. I'm 24. I'm not that old. People make me feel like I am, though. <laughs> GameCube is literally God's gift. Um, N Nintendo? No, that was that was that was Jesus Christ himself. I honestly loathe working on DSs. Very annoying to work on, tedious and hard to take apart and put back together. Yeah, I remember on that white one. You're was it a white one? Maybe not. But you're getting real fucking pissed off. I don't blame you at all. Um. Oh, I just totally tripped out there. That was funny. <laughs> I had my mouse over one of your, uh, over Charizard's icon there, and I thought Charizard just changed it midstream. I was like, what the fuck? Why'd you change it to a pointer? That looks stupid. <laughs> um, oh, that's what I love. The tedious part of fixing things is just fun. It, continue, continue to find joy in stuff like that, and I swear, most people don't think that way. Use that ideology to your advantage. You can make money without having somebody else employ you. It's just gonna take time to figure out how exactly to do it, but I promise, just... If you if you take anything away from this stream, take that and run with it, please. And if you ever want any, uh, any advice... Um, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm... I'm not the, uh... I don't know. I don't put myself on any sort of pedestal, but... I, I have good information to... To give if you need. I, I've had my own few little business endeavors that uh, I can give advice based on. Oh shit, that's a good idea. I have a scrolling information banner. I gotta screenshot that so I don't forget that idea. Thank you. I don't know why I never thought of that, but I don't know how to do that either. Uh, I'm sure I could figure it out though. It's not fun, tedious, just annoying. Tedious, but that's my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't worked on them, so I don't know. But I trust you, man. I'll have to try one and piss myself off just to figure it out. By the time I was 17, I had maxed out 401k, a wife, two kids, and a drinking problem. Congrats on the drinking problem. Fuck yeah. That's mint. Hella mint. Damn, I feel that. Man hits me with the Stonehenge. I fuck with a good Stonehenge. Is that it? A Stonehenge? I think. Damn, I was thinking of changing it to a pointer, but now I don't want to look like an idiot. Oh, uh, you know what, Charizard? I actually. <sighs> I don't know if you remember this, but we were talking about that a couple days ago. And, uh. We were talking about that a couple days ago, and you brought it up, and I think you forgot about it. I was just, uh. I was just trying to jog your memory, see if you remembered. Go ahead. You got a changer. Stonehenge, bro? What about it? Did I say the wrong fucking thing? Is that not Stonehenge? Oh, don't make me feel dumb. 
I gotta look this up. Okay, well, what the fuck is Stonehenge? Is that not an Easter Island head? Am I stupid? Oh! Stonehenge is like the whole thing. Okay, I just- I had like some sort of association between the two that was nonsensical. Aren't there like- no, I'm not- I'm gonna stop trying to draw conclusions, cause... I'm gonna be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I, um... Is there not a name for that, though? Other than just, like, the Easter Island head? Do we got... Do we got some sort of official name for it? Somebody says something bare obvious. Also being for real, I feel like I should... This icon is old AF. Well... We can always, uh, we can always run a poll and figure out the most influential, the most attractive profile picture for Charizard based on the uh, opinions of the people in our group. I'll even generate one for you with AI. I can do it. Stonehenge is in England. Yeah, man, I'm, I don't know, I'm dense. I'm dense, I'm dense, I'm dense. Man knows nothing of these things. Stonehenge would be my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon. <laughs> Stonehenge? What the fuck? <laughs> the Albertan school system fails again. You know, honestly, I... I think I failed the school system. It, and I say that mostly due to the fact that I graduated with fantastic grades, and yet I still have this gap of knowledge. How? I must have failed the school system. Ah, yes. A democracy. Truth. I'm off to sleep, but I'll leave the stream on so you get plus one viewer. A. Much obliged. You're a real one for that. I'll try to tune into all the streams you do. Have a fun rest of your hunt. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Appreciate you stopping by, and uh, appreciate you becoming a member of the community. It means a lot. Uh, just so you know, since you haven't been here before, I do stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Those are my regular stream days. Sometimes, sometimes I do stream more often. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm 4.30 MST. Uh, Sundays, I'm 2.30 MST. Um, I'll try to post those in the Discord as well. So that's just kind of like an update for people. But thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, nice having you here, man. I guess I'm assuming... I said, man, you may not be, but... Fellow Poke friend. <laughs> Deco is the goat. Buttery, how did you... How did you know? How did you know what I was thinking? Just pulled that straight from the dome. You haven't plugged for likes yet? Oh, I know, I know, I know. I try to hold off on that. I usually do that when I, like... Notice there's an influx of people. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, that or like if we're below ten likes, I'm like, yeah, guys, we gotta, we gotta fucking get that up. You guys are usually really good for likes, though. That's a big part as as to why I don't really police that too too much. What are we sitting at now? Maybe I'm wrong. Ah, yeah, we're doing we're doing all right. I I could police you a little bit. I could do a little bit. See you later, and yes, I'm a man. Okay, perfect. Just didn't want to assume. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you another time. Take her easy, Deco. Um, so, with that being said, I'll be a, I'll be a, a little cheap little bastard here. Uh, I just want to take a moment to thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, whether you've been lurking, in the, uh, lurking on the stream, whether you've been chatting, whether you've popped in, popped out. Um... I really appreciate you all being here. That said, uh, if you do want to drop a like on the stream, it never hurts, and I really do appreciate it, as for smaller creators like myself, it definitely does help as far as um, pushing the videos onto the algorithm. Uh, nevertheless, I don't want to push you to do anything you don't want to do, so uh, you being here is more than enough, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. That enough for you, Charizard? 
Did I hit the nail on the head for you? You know, it's funny, I do that and without fail, somebody leaves every time I do that. I watch it every time, and it, it, it's, it's, it's fair, but it, it's honestly kind of funny. Just for the fact that it, it continues to happen every single time. But I, I totally understand it. I hate hearing people plug their own shit. Like, when I'm listening to a video, and halfway through it's like, Oh yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm like, well... Now you're annoying and I don't want to listen to you. But, the thing is, is there's there's that large part of people who are watching and they do want to actually support the, the person behind the creations. And uh, when people do hear that, they're like, oh fuck, I, I actually did forget to click it. Um... <laughs> Um, ups and downs ups and downs that's for sure yeah I mean it is let's be real though it is quite literally begging what what else do we call it I'm asking you to promote me you're already here like as if you're not doing enough then I'm like yeah so by the way like you're you're doing all right but you could be doing more like, <laughs> it is most definitely begging my Canadian is showing. Oh shit, I gotta cover that up. Oopsie. Your voice is 1000% less annoying than those hyperactive people begging for likes. Well, I I will level it. I still I still will not put myself above that pedestal. It is begging, but I appreciate that. I um you know, it, it, it's tough from a first-person perspective because, and I know that everybody here likely resonates with what I'm about to say, but um, growing up my whole life, you, you know, you hear your own voice, and it's so blah. Like, I, I hear how I sound, and it's just peculiar. I don't know what it is. There's no, there's no specific and tonal change or any any specific aspect of my voice that that um, deters me from liking it and it's not that I dislike my voice but I, I listen back to my VODs sometimes and I'm like people genuinely stick around and listen to that like I, I have I don't know to me I hear it and it's like oh god just shut the fuck up <laughs> I don't don't need to hear you any longer but I guess uh, I, I, I have to hear myself talk and think all day, so... That's kind of a valid perspective. Although, if you really wanted, I could totally take the old big deep breath and give you that high-pitch thousand-word-a-minute spiel. I just, uh... I just might delete my channel out of shame after. I said that, and that reminded me of GTA. Um, the whole fame or shame thing where you have to, like... Is that the same thing? No, that's a different thing. That's the, I was thinking of the mission where... Uh, you have to, like, blow up that phone when it's at the dude's head for the... What is it, like... Life something? Fuck, I haven't played that in a while. I haven't played that in a long while. I guess that game's, like, 11 years old, though, so... Shouldn't beat myself up too much for not having my GTA 5 knowledge. GTA 6 next year, let's go! Ooh. And on a serious note, rest in peace to my friends that never made it to when GTA 6 will come out. That's really sad. Shame on Rockstar for that. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear I'm not the only one. Although it is kind of annoying to have to deal with that, I think that's a biological wiring for the most part. Man's up to 104. Heck yeah. I'm happy to see that. Y'all are great. We're moving on up. Moving on up. Everyone hates their own voice when it's played back. Something to do with the slight difference in how it sounds in recording versus how it sounds when we are speaking. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, I don't know exactly what it is relevant to that, but I can definitely say... That sounds right. I could tell you, like, I don't know how to explain it, but I could I could pick out the part of my voice that annoys me when I hear it on film. It's specifically, I guess, to do with, um, like, an R. 
Like when I say like anything with a any word with an R in it, I guess it sounds kind of weird, but the brain the brain picks out peculiar things that it needn't. I still can't believe the Elder Scrolls Six is still nowhere in sight. Skyrim's like 13 years old now. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even fathom why that wouldn't be. Well, <laughs> let's let's be let's be real here. Actually, I could because um, the reason being is probably because they're still making money off of the old games. Same as Rockstar. Why put out a new game when you can still make heaps of money on the old one a decade later? Can't blame them. 211,000 total encounters for the series. Coming right up. Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be inevitably disappointing because Skyrim is the best game of all time. Oh, this dude doesn't even want to acknowledge the Pokemon franchise. <sighs> no, I joke. I joke. I never really played Skyrim, though. Please don't crucify me for that. I don't deserve it. That's a weird way to spell Spongebob Squarepants, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Literally. Why else do I have two copies of that in my cabinet if it's not the best game ever? Jeez. Well, why would Beth Bethesda- Oh my god, I can never say their name properly. Bethesda. Make another Elder Scrolls game and then continue to milk the shit out of Skyrim. They're making money off mods now at the Creation Club. Oh, really? I didn't realize- Oh, that's right. That's right. I actually- I did hear about that at one point. Well, now, then they got the Skyrim VR, too. Which, um, was absolute- ass as far as reviews go initially but then people say once you add mods to it it is it, like, like impeccable i haven't bought it so i don't know but I, I should buy it and mod it that'd be a cool first uh, experience for skyrim first time playing it in vr that game is fire literally i am one of you charizard I am you and you am I. Skyrim VR playthrough coming up next on this channel? Ooh, shit. We could, we could. We could. You know, all you guys have to do is bother me in the dis- <laughs> I say bother me, that has a negative connote. Uh, all you guys have to do is, uh, toss shit in the Discord as far as recommendation recommendations go, and I am happy to do some different shit. I do primarily consider this channel, and being that I've only made Pokemon content for the most part so far, um, I can see why this doesn't come as obvious from a third-person view, but I do like to consider this overall kind of like a commentary slash challenge based channel, and I will move on to other games eventually. Um, I'll always be playing Pokemon at the same time, it's just a matter of like, maybe sometimes it'll be a video for a different game, or it'll be a stream for a different game. You know? That's literally my favorite game. Never, no jest. It's my happy game. I... Actually, it's funny you say that. I've wanted to do a, uh, like a Nickelodeon-themed playthrough for the series as well. Except I was looking at the newer, like the... The Nintendo Switch. Um, like the... The newer games they have. Like the fucking, what is it? Like Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated or something. And then there's like a, a Nickelodeon racing game too. I wanted to buy those because those were like cheap bin picks from Walmart and play through them. But I guess I have a couple of old SpongeBob games. So I should really look at those first. I feel like modding Bethesda games is literally just how you're supposed to play them. I'm going to take that as a popular opinion and agree with it. Not because I have knowledge on it, but because I trust you. Oh, I can smell the fucking beef my wife's making. That smells real good. I enjoy watching speedruns for the game. People have broken it wide open, and it's crazy the tricks they do. Well, and it's cool because, like, honestly, Nickelodeon games and, like, just all of the movie-based games from the past are so cool. Like, I have a copy of uh, Monsters, Inc. for the GameCube. I really want to do a playthrough for that. I think that'd be awesome. 
Um, yeah, I, I uh, you know, now that you say that, there's a couple of Game Boy Advance ones I have too that I'd like to play. There's so many games. And the worst part is, if you guys saw my, if you guys saw my game cabinet, there's probably so much shit you'd pick out for me to play. One of these days, maybe I'll do that. I'll throw a picture of everything in my game cabinet on the Discord, and you guys can kind of pick through and see what you like and what you want to see. Because, I mean, hell, video games are video games. I love playing anything, especially, like, Nintendo-related. I love watching speedruns. I was speedrunning Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch for a while for fun. Learning speedrunning tech is a lot of fun, honestly. That's something I've never really done, but, uh... You know, it does It does sound fun to do. Like, I know there's a lot of, um... <clears throat> there's a lot of glitches that go into speedrunning that... It's like, you know, yeah, you have to spend 15 minutes at this first part of the game, but... If you jump into this one corner and then spin backwards, then you'll skip the first fucking half an hour, you know? Like, it's just so neat to me that there's these things that rather sometimes were intentionally left by the people who made the games, or, like, just so happened to work for whatever reason. Like, <laughs> what is the chance that that just is an exploit that functions? Extremely low, I would imagine. A lot of them are quite what seems to be, they're seemingly obviously accidental. I don't know, could be wrong. I've been wrong before, believe it or not. It's funny how common cartoon and movie games were on the GameCube, Xbox, PS2, but they barely exist on consoles nowadays. I know, it's so sad. I don't, I don't know why they don't start bringing them back a little bit more, but you know, it's probably not worth it for the company is uh, like the media companies that are advertising the movies or shows it probably just genuinely doesn't pull enough money nowadays to be worth it but um what do i know i'm not part of that sector you ever play shrek 2 that was an amazing two-player licensed game um, I haven't, but I have a... Give me two seconds, I'll go step behind and check. I have a, uh... I have a Shrek game for GameCube, I just don't know which one. Uh, let me see. Shrek Super Slam, baby! I have so many other cool games there, though, like fucking Chicken Little. Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies is goaded. If you haven't played Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies, you are fucking stupid. <laughs> no, I joke, but genuinely a very fun game. Yes, there's my nostalgia speaking there, but I really enjoyed it. 4,000 total encounters for the phase. A couple of other cool ones there I didn't even realize I had. Uh, open Season. The game. Neat. Uh, Monsters Inc. Scream Arena. Madagascar. Nickelodeon Unite. Spider-Man. Oh, so many cool ones. I gotta, I gotta get into that, man. I gotta get in right now. And it definitely is easier to make a cheap temporary phone game. Because they don't even have to make them themselves. They just license it out have some random company that's willing to do it for really cheap do it and then um, the game can flop and it doesn't even matter but people will download it anyway because iPad kids right Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies is goaded genuinely it is genuinely fun like people think I'm joking when I say that if you haven't played Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies you are missing out it actually has well, in my opinion, it has replay value. But, like, replay value every five years. You know? <laughs> um, super fun, though. I really, really enjoyed that game. It's very, very fun. Very lighthearted. But also, like, pretty well made for what it is. I will say. I did... I have genuinely been thinking about doing an Attack of the Twonkies playthrough as well. I just don't know how I could make it a challenge. 
I guess I don't really need to, though. I could just get, like, ridiculously slammed and play it. Or, like... I mean, I don't know. It's always fun to have caveats when it comes to stuff like that. I'm gonna ask the old chat GPT, see what it tells me. But yeah, I haven't played Shrek 2. Um, I should, though. I thought I might have it, but yeah, only, only Shrek Super Slam. Did you play the Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island before? I love that one as a kid. I'm not too sure. I don't think I... I might have played it as a kid, but I can't... No, I can't. I can't recall that honestly. That's not something that I, I can say I'm super familiar with. If you want to send some, uh, send like a some shit about it in the Discord, maybe like a a cool playthrough video or something, I'd be happy to check it out after. Only reason I say that is because I check the Discord after stream, but otherwise I, I forget a lot of stuff. I'll talk to you later, man. Having dinner with a friend. Much love. Stay safe. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Much love. Take it easy. And, uh, yeah. You stole my fucking line. Stay safe. <laughs> appreciate you, man. See you next time. It's a sequel to the Nicktoons Unite. It's just a short beat em up, but it's so captivating as a youngin. Let me let me double check. I might have it there. I only checked one side of my my Nickelodeon games here. Um, so it was what was it called again? Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island. Give me thirty seconds. I'll go see. Nope, but I got Cars, I got Chicken Little, I got Spongebob, Lights, Camera, Pants. <laughs> it's about the closest I got, though. Oh, Lights, Camera, Pants would be fun, too. If I recall, that one was fun. I don't know why I have two copies of it, though. I still would genuinely really like to do a uh, an Animal Crossing play through on the GameCube as well but yet again gotta make that sorta of, gotta add some sort of caveat to the playthrough instead of just like a regular old one I guess I could I guess I could I guess I could I closed myself off to too many ideas great party game you know cuz it's been so long since I ever even played it what's the what's the play style of that game Lights, camera, pants, that is. Also, I, uh, I brought it up at the start of the stream, but uh, only those who were here at the start would know. I just want to point out, so I was at the store the other day, and the other day was actually yesterday, and I was doing some thrift shopping, and I found something really cool. I found this bell. I was like, fuck it, $3? I want to have this for the shiny hunts. So, if I do see a shiny, I am going to make it habit that the bell gets dinged every time we get a shiny. I was just going to ding it once because I, I thought it was kind of cute just to do a little one every time we get a shiny, but uh, my, my sound deadening on the microphone kind of takes it away a little bit, as you likely heard. So, oh, I really gave her there. My wife's upstairs probably fucking sitting there like, oh my god, you got one. Nice. <laughs> I told her about that yesterday. That'd be a good way to fuck with viewers in a way, honestly. Just like, when I notice chat's slowing down a bit, just start hammering on it. <laughs> You're like, no way, shiny, shiny. <laughs> Wait, where is it? Yeah, my bad, guys. Y'all were just slowing the chat. That's some type of stuff I would pull. It's a mini game compilation, mostly. Oh, cool. So it's like some. It, it's almost. Did it take. I don't want to assume this. Did it take any inspiration from, like, the Mario Party games at all? 
Oh my god, not taking inspiration from this fucking yawn? Hopefully not. Uh, let's just update real quick. So it said, are we at 104 now? Hey, Jan. My roommates took them. Oh, I don't know where they are. They were on that rack. Are you fucking kidding me? How do I get this back? I will. Sure. Fuck's sakes. My roommates are moving out and, and they seem to be taking my shit. I love that. Just find another way to be a pain in my ass, why don't you? Ah, uh, yeah, from what I remember, the minigames are pretty engaging and competitive, so they're fun. Now you got me wanting to play that right now. Oh, sorry, now I'm... Oh. I gotta let it out. I really... I hate when I have to deal with this kind of stuff. It's like, you know that wasn't yours. I don't know why you took it. I don't know what told you that was a good idea. Back to the shinies. Back to the shinies, guys. If I don't get a response here, I might have to run upstairs and go talk to somebody, though. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm mostly just annoyed because I got screwed over. I was told they were renewing the lease, and then day before re-signing, uh, or I guess two days before, they, uh, they backed out of re-signing the lease, so I had to re-sign a house on my own, so my rent is essentially double now, and I have to find new roommates. They put them in the corner cupboard. Hopefully they didn't intend on taking them. The corner cupboard? What do you mean the corner cupboard? Okay, that's cool. It's cool. We're good, we're good. Back to Pokemon mode, boys. Enough of me complaining. So, it's a series of a bunch of mini games. Are they, are they like their own unique types of mini games, or are they like just kind of general? How would I even put that? No, I, I don't even know how to put that. I, I was gonna say essentially like general mini games that people tend to play. Like, as a commonplace 
thing. Yeah, no, no, I don't have. I genuinely don't have words for that. So <laughs> they're not coming out of my mouth. I absolutely hate when that happens, though. Like I, I have been speaking the English language for almost 25 years, and somehow there's still like almost every day there is still a moment that I find myself sitting there thinking, "Is there a word for that? How?" How is it that that happens to be the case? How is my proficiency in my only spoken language so minimal that I find myself lost for words in simplistic situations? I guess that comes back full circle to what I was saying earlier. It was me that failed the education system, not the education system failing me. Like the one by the stove that they used to keep their pans. Oh my god, they, they took it. Huh. huh. My roommates took my pans and stuffed them away in their own spot, and my, my wife found them. How fucking ignorant. Jesus. You do like gauntlets of mini games, I think, and then the winner is determined after three to four. And so, is there like a bunch of different ones? Like, I take it there's a pool of, like, 25 of them, or... Obviously, 25 is just a number I pulled out of my behind, but... God, now I have to start looking after my shit while they're moving. I have to make sure they're not taking any other of my stuff. I knew this was going to be a problem. Sorry, I'm getting off track. We're on stream, and for stream, this does not matter. But that's just... No, bygones are bygones. English is quite lame, though, I will say. Like, especially given a lot of the rules uh, that are in the language that kind of tend to contradict others. Uh, especially compared to the rest, like... Why is it that so many other languages in the rest of wor rest of the world can follow these these rules that seem to be at least somewhat congruent through different languages, but then English kind of just takes its principles from nowhere. Like, have six words that mean the same thing? Fuck yeah. Why? I don't know. So weird. What else is weird is that my feet are warm, yet my upper body is hot. Um, I want to put on my hoodie, but I'm going to start sweating again. <laughs> That's not fair to me. Yeah, Wikipedia says 30. Hey, I was almost on the money. We were close, we were close. Evening, guys. Just woke up for a drink of water. Sorry for missing this. Hey, it's all good. It is all good, Chris. Happy to see you. Hope you're doing well, and thanks for stopping by. And I feel like I, I I know you told me this before, in fact, but what uh, what is your time zone? Do you just have weird working hours, or is your time zone just very off from when I tend to stream? You know what's funny is I find, like, we get a lot of people from, like, we have a uh, person from Tasmania that comes in relatively often. We've got a couple people that come in from the UK. Australia. Is, wait, is Tasmania Australia or New Zealand? Uh, I'm not even going to try to guess because geography is not my strong suit, but um, it's just interesting. Like, I guess the times I stream, we hit multiple time zones. Um, at very weird times during both of them. It's frustrating when students ask for clarification on why words are spelled one way and not others, or where contradi contradictions exist, but all I can say is, uh, there's no rule, you just gotta know. That's so true, because I can even remember being a student and you ask those things, and teachers just tell you, that's how it is, remember it. And it works, but like, come on. Why are we lazy? Refine the language. Make it easier for other people. 
Including the ones that are still learning it. You too, man. It's AST, so three hours ahead, but I get up early, so I have to sleep at eight, so five your time. Okay, that makes sense. So, essentially, you can catch, like, half an hour of the stream before you're trying to go to bed. Well, I wish I could change my stream time, but I already push it, like, I don't, well, I guess, I don't know if push it's the right word, but I'm always late for stream as it is. AST is Atlantic Standard. I didn't know that. I did not know that. So I take it that just applies... Nope, I'm not even guessing. Geography is not my thing. Not even guessing. You can tell me if you want. Otherwise, I will stay oblivious. <laughs> um, but no, I, I really... I would love to have my stream times earlier. Like, just even all things aside, just for myself, I would enjoy to have uh, my stream times earlier. But my work doesn't... I thought I got off early enough to have stream times at, like, 4, but I... As a person with, um, respectively, I say this because I'm not diagnosed, um, but I'm pretty sure I have ADHD. Um, you'll notice I can't, I can't make a time deadline worth shit. But it's within reason. Like, I've had the same job for almost three years. I've never been late. I've not been late once. I, I make sure that I am not late, but when it comes to anything else that is not, like, I will get in shit, I have to do this, I'm late. Every single time. Every single time. Oh, that's right! I forgot! I'm stupid. I knew you were in Nova Scotia, too. I, uh... The second I see NS, I, I knew that I should have remembered that. Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island are under AST, but yeah, no, it's okay. You should stream when you can and want to. <sighs> yeah, I... Honestly, I wish I could stream more often, but work gets in the way. And I mean, to be fair, eventually the goal is that streaming is the work, but uh, there's gonna be a long, there's gonna be a lot, a long lot of time in between there, um, where I just kind of got to make stuff work. So we're on the schedule. We're on. It's kind of annoying, but uh, at the point, I, I like to say if and when, just for the the case of jinxing something. Uh, but when, when this comes to something that I can be doing much more often on kind of my own scheduling, regardless of what allows that to, what allows that to be, I would like to be streaming five, yeah, five days a week. Uh, and I would be streaming for longer than four hours at a time. I'd probably do like five days a week, six hours a day. But we got a long road ahead of us. We just rolled over 100 subs, so... <laughs> Baby steps. But yeah, it's, it's kind of tough to try to make stream times work for everybody, and that's kind of why I want to be able to stream longer, is so that that's less of an issue. Um, you know, like, if I could, if I could hit... Six hours of the day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday? That's four days. I don't know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Um, I could get on, say, two hours earlier, and then that's two more hours that are actually quite critical for a lot of the people who come over here. Um, and it would just, it would be a lot more inclusive, but... Unfortunately, it's not the case yet. Eventually, we will get there, though. Dang, that's a lot of streaming, but you gotta start somewhere. Well, that's exactly it. I, uh, I mean... A person still has to pay the bills at the end of the day and save some money, and... When you have 100 subscribers on YouTube, it doesn't pay any bills, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> uh, 212,000 total encounters for the series. Well, let's see if we get anything. We never get anything on the, on the thousand. Never. How, dis how disrespectful. Don't you think? I 
I'm going to uh, just take two seconds and update the sub goal here too. Didn't realize that's off now. Uh, there we go. Anyways, though, I gotta go back to sleep. Have a good night. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Have a fantastic night, and I'm sure we'll see you again at some point. Hey, crazy Chris. Well, we're almost 5,000 encounters in for today, and... Our theme is just ringing true constantly. I don't know what happened. We were, like, especially on Route 22, we were fucking pushing good numbers. Like, you you were, like, 2,000 encounters, 3,000 3, encounters, 4,000, 1,000, 6,000. It was always within that kind of, that, that nice under odds half to three quarter realm. And I, I don't know what happened. Shit just turned on its head. And here we are. Here we are. You know what I find weird too? So we got that shiny Pidgey the other day and that was awesome. However, I went and I, I changed on the bottom right of the screen here. I changed the GIF to the shiny Pidgey. And I looked at the, the GIF that's there and I thought, that doesn't look like a shiny Pidgey sprite at all. The shiny P Pidgey is essentially like gold, right? It's like a greenish gold. And, uh, huh. So I went and I, I went back onto the website that has the 3D models that I get these from. And I looked, and sure as shit, that was actually the Pidgey sprite. I went and I checked the other one, and it was even more brown. So, I know it looks like it's not shiny down there, but you just gotta take my word for it. I, I did take the shiny sprite off the internet. It just didn't. For whatever reason, it uh, it doesn't really match what it is in Gen 3. Granted, I, I guess it is just a 3D model. If I went in and I looked for just Gen 3 specifically, like a Gen 3 sprite, then I would probably find what I'm looking for. However, that's not the case at the moment. I think Shiny Pidgey got butchered like many mons in Gen 6. Why do you say that? What is the reason for your opinion, Charizard? I want to hear it. The jump to 3D models changes a lot. Oh, yeah, that's that's fair. That is fair. That's one thing that I kind of I'm I'm really sad that they strayed away from. Like I understand that 3D models became kind of like the uh, the standard or the norm for these games. However, I mean I don't know. I I see absolutely nothing wrong with the pixel art. It looks fantastic. Um. The sprites are clean. I think you, even if you showed these to somebody who was substantially younger than I, somebody who didn't grow up with these games, they would still like them. But I could be wrong too. At the end of the day, I think they were just striving to uh, striving to keep up with other games that were being produced at the same time. They've used Gen 5 animated sprites for the layout instead. That's not a bad idea. I'll um, I'll look and see what the website that I use has got. Um, I'm pretty sure it's got uh, pretty sure it's got Gen 5 ones, but I'm not not certain on that. So don't quote me. 
All right, we're throwing the Odeon. on. It is cold. Cold, cold, cold. I don't know what happened. But... Oh. Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, it's all over. It's all over. Ugh. All right, I've emerged. I've emerged a new and better man. A warmer one at that. Oh, it's like an instant hug. Like an instant hug. You know how annoyed I'm going to be if we spend all this time on Route 2 and I continually get Rattatas? Like, don't get me wrong, we, we've we only gotten one Rattata on Route 2. Uh, no. I think I'd be wrong. I think this is Route 2 number 4. So if this is... No, we don't have three Rattatas on this road, do we? Oh. Route two, number four. What was route two, number one and two? Route two, number one was a Rattata at 23,000. Route two, number two. Oh yeah, this is Route 2 number 3. I just skipped that on the counter. I was gonna say, that makes no sense. So it's just been a Rattata and a Pidgey. But it, it just... It's kind of annoying because we have the option to get Rattata on Route 22 and Route 2. And we've already phased on a few on Route 2, so... Or, sorry, on Route 22. So, we're kind of at the point where we may have, like, ten of them by the end of this. If not more, actually. That is true. That is true. I, uh, I, I do feel as if we're bound to get a ton of rats here. It's just the first couple I saw, they were cool. And then I kept seeing them. And then I kept seeing them, and I was like, okay, well, this this isn't really... This isn't different anymore. <laughs> and there's only so many natures you can get, too. But then again, I, I mean... Even if I wanted all the natures, I think I'd probably need... Oh, goodness. That's actually... That would be an insane amount of phases. I think you'd have to be extremely lucky to get them all, um, get them all in less than, like, 25 goes. <clears throat> like, extremely lucky. I feel like the odds are substantially lower. Five thousand for the current phase. These Rattatas are on a ship. Oh, God. No! <laughs> Why? We don't need any more. Why didn't they just keep them in the first few routes and then just say, like, no. You can... You can find Rattatas elsewhere. Oh. Excuse me, on. Like, I understand that you have to have those regular, the common Pokemon, but do we have to, do we have to have them everywhere? Can we have just like, routes that have low encounter rates in general? And you just don't encounter Pokemon as often? I feel like that'd be cool. I feel like that'd be real cool, actually. I'll pass Brock. I was wondering what you meant by that, but I, I, um... I don't know why I didn't ask, honestly. I should've. I'm gonna bet you get over 100 by the time you're done with these games. I would say you're probably right, and depending on where we're at, it, it could genuinely be more between the two. 
Because, I mean, I guess we can figure this out right now if we want to. How many... How many routes have Rattata in Fire Red and Leaf Green? And of those routes, what are the highest and lowest encounter rates they are? And I, I guess at that point, though, we gotta look at, like, what are the other phases on that route? What are the odds of getting them as well? Oh. What are the odds of getting those phases as well? But, I mean... Honestly, Charizard, I feel like a hundred Rattata and Raticate between the whole uh, Fire Red, Leaf Green, Shiny Living decks might even be kind of undershooting it a little bit. Okay, wait, maybe maybe not, depending. So we have how many routes? So route 1, 2, 4, 9, 17, 18, 22, and Pokemon Mansion. Okay, so I guess a better or a leading question to that would be how many routes are there total I guess no that doesn't that doesn't matter the others aren't relevant as long as we're counting how many how many Rattata we encounter also why does number one consistently encounter quicker than the rest I don't know and maybe it's not consistent but I've noticed continually that uh, if you if you watch as we reset so we'll go down here it watch it's gonna be opposite now but yeah, it, it was one of the first ones, but oftentimes out of an encounter, it's the first, it just instantly, boom, up there, has a shiny, or doesn't have a shiny, has a, a Pokemon. And you know, I tend to, every time I see one encounter super quick, I assume that it's because it hit a shiny frame, but that's genuinely based off of the fact that one time once, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> One time, once, I had, I think it was Caterpie? Yeah, I think it was the shiny Caterpie. And it instantly popped up on the screen. And because it was the first one that popped up, I saw it, I looked, and I noticed the shiny immediately. So I think I'm just kind of, uh, kind of accustomed to thinking that now. Oh, goodness. I'm still yawning. Um, you haven't, if you haven't been here before and you're just popping in, you're gonna wonder what the fuck I'm doing. And I'm gonna explain it for you so you don't need to question me. <laughs> um, so what we got here is a bottle of peppermint oil. And I utilize this bottle because for some reason, every time I shiny hunt, I have this, I have this, um, this inherent natural need to start yawning all the time. And I don't know why, because it genuinely is such a fun thing for me, and it annoys me to yawn so much when I do it. But, put a little bit of this peppermint oil in the old mustache, and it keeps the guy breathing without all the yawns. Ooh, nice, 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 nice. That's a little bit better. So, uh, we've got Rattata being 35% on 4, 45% on 2, 40% on 9, 5% on 17. Really, a 5% Rattata encounter? That's kind of interesting. 45% on 22, and 15% Pokemon Mansion. So, realistically, we're close to, like, every second phase on most of the routes it's on, we should be getting a Rattata. And depending on what else is on those routes, yeah, we, we could be there quite a bit. But no, that's, that's, um, that could be a lot worse, honestly. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just resetting. Get these guys all in the same spot. Yeah, I, I would have thought there was more, but you know what, Charizard, I'm... 100% not going to complain about the fact that there's, uh, that there's not. <laughs> I will ask, so we've got Rattata, Weedle, Caterpie, Pidgey. Those, those must be the most common of the Pokemon we see. Are there any more that kind of fall into that common category, or otherwise do we start to get kind of rote, rote specific, rote specialized? specialized that's an interesting sentence <laughs> like route four and nine have ekans and santru you will need once you finish you will have to visit the other i didn't understand that the first time i read it 
Wrote four nine of Ekans and Sinister, so uh, you need so once you finish one, you will not have to visit the Okay, I see, I see. So I'll I'll finish four and then I won't have to go to nine for that. Okay. That's not bad, that's not bad. And you know what the worst thing is, is I kind of figured that was uh, that was the case. I just didn't need the confirmation. No, I did, I did, I joke. How how common is Spiro on the other routes? Uh, of course we it had to be a ten percent right off the bat, hey. Okay, so we've got 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, 17, 18, 22, 23, Treasure Beach, Kindle Road, Mount Ember, Cape Brink, Waterpath, Ruin Valley, and Canyon Entrance. Oh my god, are you kidding me? So I'm going to spend all this time phasing. I'm, I'm already 10 phases in for a Spiro. Which means I'm at odds. I should have gotten one already. I should be halfway to the line. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to get like... I'm gonna get like 20 phases in, let's say. And then I'm gonna catch like another 25 in the future. I love that. I love that. That is so ideal. Hero is also on routes 17, 18, 23, Treasure Beach, Kindle Road, Mount Denver, Cape Brink, Waterpath, Ruin Valley, Canyon, and Trist, Seville Canyon. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, do I get to put on the dunce cap net now? For uh, doing a POC on this game for shinies, a POC is one thing, but like a, a shiny POC with that common of oh my god, no. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It'll be funny once we have like a hundred of each. You know, this is why I have Pokemon Box, though, because I'm going to have so many phases that they are not going to fit into my games. Uh, my Shinies are going to have to stay on Pokemon Box. Honestly, I will treasure every Spearow or Fearow you catch. As will I. It's just like... Uh, um, there's gonna be so many of them, you know? Uh, a Gen 3 shiny is a Gen 3 shiny and they're cool as well. I totally... Yeah, you're right. And for how many, like, dozens, hundreds of hours I spent as a child playing Gen 3 and never got a shiny... <laughs> Sorry, something in my throat. <coughs> oh my god. Um, I really, I really should actively treasure them a little bit more, but to answer your question, yes, I do have Pokemon Box. Um, and I, I spent more on it than I should have, but I got it for substantially cheaper than market value. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'll grab my, uh, I'll grab my baby right now. Just let me pop back in here, get the encounters, and I'll, I'll give you a little flash. Just a quick flash. Oh! You know, that's something I, I haven't said to too many people. Ah, uh, but I'll tell you. I'll, I'll grab it first, and then I'll tell you. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Uh, the glare is insane. As I have it in an acrylic box for obvious reasons um, and my blur thing <laughs> loves to blur it out but yeah this is this is a complete in box big box version of Pokemon box um, the only thing with it is where the sticker was on the top here you can see oh it's on this side there's a little bit where it kind of peeled off there, where it says ultimate, but that's it. It's just kind of surface peeled, and honestly, to me, that doesn't bother me because that's part of opening the package. 
I literally have boxes I got five years ago that are in worse shape than this. So, this is, yeah, this is my, like, my absolute baby. I bought this last year. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't going to buy it. I was looking for a regular version, a non-big boxed version, uh, because there are two, like, they're separate. Um, there's the regular just case and box version, and there's the, the big box version. Um, and the person that reached out to me with the big box version was asking about... It was about a... Th I'll just, I'll just give you the, the details. So I was willing to spend 2,000 Canadian on the regular version. And I told the guy I wasn't looking for the big box version, uh, but I said send it to me anyway. He sent me photos, and it was, as you saw, in very, very good, beautiful condition. So we talked for a little bit, and I said, you know what, thanks, appreciate the offer, but not, uh, not gonna happen. Uh, but then I thought about it like a month later, and I was like, you know what, I, I, I really ought to hit that guy up. I ought to message him. So I did, and he wanted like $4,500 Canadian. Which is fair. Uh, the big box version does sell for, uh, on average, between depending on condition, between six and ten thousand dollars. Actually, I would say between four and ten thousand uh, dollars, because there's some pretty, pretty um, rough condition ones. Um, but to fully answer your question, um, I was willing to pay about. Two thousand dollars for the regular version, and I got this one for thirty-five, which sounds kind of insane, I know. But uh, when you consider the value and appreciation, it it really it made sense to me, and it's something I'll genuinely use. So I don't feel bad about it. I don't regret it. I'm happy I did it. Um, hey, Mecha Kind, happy to see you. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. How's your day going today? Also, YouTube's count has been weird. Like, it, it tells me I have one viewer right now, and I, act I actively have two people talking. So that's not the case. <laughs> uh, it always glitches out like that. Um, yeah, I hope you're doing well, Mecca. How's your day been? And yeah, it, it, it's, it's not bad when you consider, like... Bear in mind, this is Canadian dollars, right? If it was US, that'd be a little worse, but... Um... 3500 I uh I knew it was a once in a lifetime thing. Like there's estimated to literally be hundreds of these in the world. So that to me was just uh I'm genuinely not going to get the opportunity again. And in 10 years it'll be worth way more, so I had to do her. Says for me there is 6. Sorry, I don't know why I I why I missed this. Um, says there's... Si oh, six, uh, six viewers. Really? I, I'm looking and it actively tells me one, even right now. That's so peculiar. Like, I, I'm... I, as we speak, I'm looking right now and it says one, but... That's, uh, that's weird. Um, you just found a shiny Pokemon, really? That is awesome, Mecha. What, uh, what shiny? And what game? So just just to just to check here, does it still say a number around there? Because as I speak, it has still not changed from one. But obviously, as we know, there's there's two of you talking, and I do keep I do keep one open just so I can read chat as it comes in, because uh, there's a little bit of a buffer time on the chat that shows on the main layout here. I don't understand why the count is always so off. Sometimes it's actually bang on though, so I really shouldn't complain. I was gonna say, I just don't understand why that... Yeah, it is what it is. Way she goes. Um, 
let me just see something. Does it have something to do with my internet? No. Why would it? Why would it? <laughs> okay. Let's continue on here. That is one thing I will say though that I noticed uh, the last couple of streams I have been I have been noticeably like more up and down as far as like peaks and valleys go on viewership. I tend to oh hey Jen. Is that just for me? Oh my goodness. Well, thank you. Did I refresh already? Yep, I did. Okay. But yeah, I've noticed, like, um, just to continue on what I was saying there. So I used to, uh, and I say used to, like, I've been doing this for years. I find that, like, I'll average, like, 7 to 10 viewers usually which is which is awesome i love that um but yeah for some reason like last stream and this stream were not near as well performing as most usually are which like you said it happens uh it's not a reason to get discouraged it's just weird it's very weird and the the weirder thing is too is after the vod goes live you'll see the numbers aren't far off from usual so it's just like i guess my retention's kind of dropping off which is okay people come people go and you know i i do have to take the positives from this too like this stream i gained another three subs which was fantastic got to have some good conversations with a few people uh, a few new people, rather. But yeah, like, I do... I do get discouraged by it sometimes a little bit uh, when it does happen, but, I mean, there's nothing... There's nothing you can do. I do want to test something though, because let me try something. I'm just gonna. Yeah, that's, that's weird. That's really weird. I, uh, the reason I say that's weird is because I, I opened up another tab, just to see, under a different account, and I open the video, and it doesn't change it. I genuinely think it, that might be an issue with, uh... I, I don't know what, but, I, I mean, it's clearly not counting properly. Yeah, either way, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Um, but no, you're right, I, like, I, I genuinely, I, I definitely am growing quite a bit. Like, I get a lot of new people... Uh, in the run of a month. Um, yeah, just, I mean, stuff goes up and stuff goes down, right? People don't tell you to pull out of the stock market just because stocks go up and stocks go down. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's, that's fair. That is fair. Um, th the thing is, when it comes to shiny hunting, though, and these streams, like, I try to, especially because the streams are usually three, four hours long, I try to make sure that as seldom, I guess maybe not as seldom as I can, but I, I try to find a balance between, um, between talking about Pokemon and, like, what we're doing actively, 
and just talking regularly, you know, at people, people to people, um, about just, you know, normal life stuff, you know, whether it be work, school, um, current events. I, I try to find that balance and it's, it's tough for me because from a third person perspective, anytime I go through and I watch my VODs and I notice I'm talking about something specifically to do with what's on the screen uh, or just like the hunt in general, I feel like, and this, this could be skewed, but I feel like from my perspective, it almost seems like it might seem to others like it's just filler like I'm just kind of saying stuff to say it and I just I don't want it to come across that way ever um, I always want to just talk about you know like what whatever's interesting at the time whatever we want to talk about not necessarily I don't know I feel like when you're doing something like this and you continually just harp on the subject over and over you're kind of beating a dead horse Because, um, I mean, there's only so much to talk about when it comes to shiny hunting, too, right? Like, we're here. We're doing it. We've been here. <laughs> uh, that was 213,000 total encounters for the series, by the way. Uh, so, that is something that I haven't, I haven't actually considered, Charizard. Do you want to kind of... Um, just kind of educate me a little bit on how that would work. Because that sounds like a cool, uh, like a cool idea. I like that. Because I mean, to be fair, at the moment I do just kind of play the same, uh, the same uh, playlist that I made every stream, and I do need to make more. Some streamers use like Streamlabs to play YouTube videos slash songs that the viewers suggest when they donate or something. Okay, I'll have to look into seeing what uh, what kinds of you know like what programs to use to implement such a thing. Is that that's definitely a good idea? I like that idea. And then it kind of keeps things different too, right? Keeps things, uh, less stagnant, if you will. Oh yeah, and I mean it'd be it'd be cool to kind of give people the uh... yeah yeah I guess that's I wonder if there would be a way to actively kind of filter that stuff probably not though. Because surely I mean being on the internet. Um being on the internet, people are going to want to play stuff that's going to be concerning, <laughs> to say the least, right? You know, what I will say is, just given the fact that um, we are a little bit slower, well, we're very slow on the stream right now, let's be realistic, um, and I, my wife did make me dinner that is sitting beside me warm, uh, while it is still warm, I think I will 
I will go up to 6,000 encounters, and I think we'll call it there for the day. I think that's a good place to stop. We still had a pretty good stream. Might as well, uh, you know, make... make use of the good food and not have to throw it in a microwave. Especially when it's Sloppy Joe's, that's probably not the best, uh, best plan of attack. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. Six to seven is kind of where we where we tend to sit. Uh, I I try to go full odds on lots of streams, but I need I need over eight hours for that. Or not eight? Jeez, that would be bad. Uh, I need over four hours to hit odds because uh, we average just under two thousand per. I'm looking here, though, and there must be... I don't know if it's something going on with, like... The internet, or just YouTube... Being weird, but... So I, I just went here, and I went on that... That second account. And I tried to vote, and it won't even let me vote under that account on the poll, so... I'm wondering if this is almost some sort of weird glitch. I can't, let me try it. I can't like either. It's really weird. I don't know, either way, I'm not worried about it. We we had a bunch of people come in today. A lot of new faces. Um, and most importantly, I mean, we got a bunch of progress, so. It is what it is. Well, just a couple more encounters, and that'll be it for the day. See if we get any sort of lucky. Similar, similar to last time, because it seems you were kind of a good luck charm. Yep, this will be the last one. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do one over. Just, uh, fuck me, I do that every time. I'll do one over just to, just to check. That was insane with the Zigzagoons on Sunday, dude. The two, I mean, especially, uh, it was nice that the one had pickup. But to get the two, and then, like, just the irony as well of, like, you get that, and then... I get the, uh, I get the, the Pidgey in between, that was, that was, that was goaded, I gotta say. Okay, I'm doing one more, don't hate me. Can't be stopped. Yep, something did happen to my stream. I just got that notification. Resource has been exha exhausted. Check quota. So it's been like manually limited. Why is that? I was gonna say, I've never, like in the last six months, I have not had one viewer straight for this long. It's definitely something happened. I wonder what it is. Huh. Okay, well that's that's so weird. It's we like it's genuinely like something got barred on the stream or something. I don't know what. E.G. check quota. 
Well, either way, it it's it's. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna do some research on this, and we'll see. We'll see what's causing that. But that's so weird. Um, as much as I would have liked to end on two three three one two, you two one three three one two. Unfortunately, we still had to run away there. So we're a little bit above, but. Um, at least I found that out. That's good to know. Weird that that just happened all of a sudden. Like, it's, it's not like there's anything I could do to change it. wonder if somebody came in and, like... I know some people get kind of annoyed when they see my setup. I think... I don't know if it's, like, a... People just think it's, like, a waste of resources. Or, like, I know a lot of people don't like seeing setups like this because they they get annoyed that like <laughs> you have an influx of hardware when it's already so expensive in the market so they they view you as like the reason prices inflate and stuff like that and i i totally understand that being said i've noticed on reddit before people have reported me for posting my setup um so maybe that could have happened here too uh and that's something to do with it but nevertheless that's not really a it doesn't matter um <clears throat> I, uh, I don't know. Weird stuff just happens. So it is what it is. It's cool. But. <laughs> oh, that that's a, that's a quote for the books right there, Charizard. I think your setup is good. And these aren't Bitcoin mines. These are fucking cute. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. But some people just don't, don't like to, don't like to see it. A lot of people. And I mean, I understand it. Not everybody is in a position where they can get really good deals on stuff like this, or maybe they they can't afford this kind of stuff, or it just seems like an extraneous, ridiculous expense. All of the which I I fully understand. Um, I don't I don't advocate for the animosity, of course, but uh, I understand. You know, I I remember seeing a post on Reddit. This one person had. Uh, uh, it was like a hundred and something AGS 101 Game Boys. And I was super angry because I was trying to buy them at the time. And it's like, I can't get them for cheaper than like a hundred and something dollars. And all of a sudden there's this guy bragging about getting them cheap. But you know what I've grown to learn is it's kind of the same thing. You have to look... You have to look for deals, first of all, and you have to be diligent. You don't know how long people have been looking for the stuff. You don't know how long they've been collecting for. It's just, you never have the full picture. So making these assumptions and getting annoyed just isn't really worth it. Um, as much as, I mean, it might be stupid. Is it really my life though? Is it my opinion to be had? Probably not, but honestly, first impressions for many is that you're doing this on an emulator because many are not crazy enough to get 16 cubes, 16 games. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's very true. In fact, only few are. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say it better than you. You're, you're correct. Most people, I mean, you even see like four or eight consoles. And I think I've seen a guy with 10 once. Um, it's, it is ridiculous. And I, I'll be the first one to admit that every time. It's a... It's an expense that um, you'd have to be crazy to put yourself through, but yeah, when you got the kind of nostalgia for this like I do, and you don't have all the time in the world to waste trying to find Chinese, well, this is the uh, this is the solution. So, <laughs> TBH, you said it was what hooked me on your channel. Well, I, I really appreciate that. That's uh, that's kind of you to say. <clears throat> I uh, I really I really appreciate the. How would I say? Um, oh, can't I think of the word? Just the, I, for lack of better terms, the hype, the uh, the appreciation behind the setup. Because um, it does take a certain kind of person to appreciate it. But I, I totally agree. This it makes me so happy. Like sometimes I just walk into my room and I just stare at the shelf. I just turn and I look. I'm like, wow, I, I spent all this time building this and I finally have it. I spent, 
you know, like 18 years of my life thinking about this being a possibility and finally being able to make it something that I've not only gotten, but been able to share with people is such a, such a large accomplishment for me. Just being able to, yeah, just, just being able to share this shiny hunting journey with others and show people that, you know, if you do put your resources in the right place and you're really fucking crazy, you can do stuff like this too. Um... Well, that's exactly it, right? Like, I, I started I started my collecting back in, realistically, like, 2005. Um, as a child. Like, it wasn't actively a collection then, but they were games I played and I enjoyed them. And um, coming to... What? 2015 is when I really started collecting again? And yeah, from, like, 2015 to 2024... It's just been searching, searching the internet, finding deals, buying stuff. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the cubes were in the last year, uh, but that's because I have a friend who sells game cubes wholesale. Um, it's it's his job. He just sells old consoles and old games, so I was able to get a lot of them for you know fifty or sixty dollars. But still, like I had a lot of them from just you know like. You find someone on Marketplace, you get a bundle, and the console is essentially free with the bundle or something, right? But yeah, especially the games and the Game Boy players and the Wavebird. Oh my god, the Wavebird receivers. That is the worst. No one ever even thinks about it. Is You're like, oh yeah, you got 16 cubes, 16 games, 16 Game Boy players, yeah, and 16 Wavebird receivers. It's that that was the worst by far. That was such a pain in the ass. Um, huge pain in the ass. Like that that's the one part that has stopped me from wanting to expand the uh, the cube setup is just like how how hard it is to find wavebird receivers, especially on their own. Uh, but that's why the you'll see well you can't see, but I have a shelf with like 18 wavebird controllers. Because it was cheaper for me to buy the Wavebird controllers with the receivers than the receivers on their own. So there, there's a lot of shit that goes into it. But It is frustrating because all this stuff is so fun and awesome to play and it's become so unavailable with how pricey they've become. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can you can always go and get Japanese stuff or something, but uh, it's, it's all going up in price. I mean, yeah, the English stuff is the most expensive, but it, it gets worse. Or, I guess, it, sorry. <laughs> it gets better, but it doesn't necessarily get that much better. And it's that's also why I've been very, very, um... I've been very diligent to make sure that every time I see a deal on this kind of stuff, I, I jump on it. And I don't anymore, because I have my 16x setup, and that's enough for me. I don't plan on ever expanding it. I will if the channel ever grows like massive and people want that, but otherwise it's, I have what I have. Um, I did what I needed to do and eventually maybe I'll start expanding on the DS side of things, but uh, for now, this is where we sit and um, eventually maybe Heart Gold, Soul Silver, probably not even though. I, I would hunt Diamond, Pearl, Platinum and I don't really think I'd hunt anything beyond that. Black 2, White 2, but I have a copy of each. Double hunting is good enough for games that expensive. But yeah, it would really, it would be really nice if Nintendo and Game Freak put Gen 1, 2, and 3 on their online. I don't know why they don't. They could charge for it and they could make good money for it. It's like they just make too much money to even care, honestly. That's what it seems like. But yeah, um, as far as the controller and receiver goes, I mean, <clears throat> you can't, like, I tried a couple times with people to be like, hey, can I just get this? People won't do it. People rather sell receivers on their own for like $120 or ish, remember, Canadian dollars. Uh, or you can get the Wavebird controller for like 40 or you can get both for like 85 every time so that that's what i did you just get you get that and then i was always like oh i can just resell the wave birds but then you i don't <laughs> so now i just have a, a ton of wave birds but if i ever want to play like massive land hunts or something or land games with people or something i can do it i could play like a 16 game wireless uh double dash 
I just need the four land receivers and then I could do it. Um, I'm just trying to get a 4X 3DS setup for Gen 6 hunting. That'd be nice. That'd be really nice. And, I mean, it's definitely worth, I mean, do an internet test. See what your internet comes up at. Um, even if it is kind of crappy, I mean, if you can wire it directly, then you very well may just be stable enough to do it. Personally, I have, like, I have good internet, but it's not, it's nothing extremely special. Um, my internet costs, for the house, it's 130 bucks a month. Uh, but I pay half, because I split the house with people. Uh. But then again, it depends on where you are. It depends on if you have fiber optic or not. There's a whole bunch that goes into it. But if you ever have any questions or like you want to start up on this kind of stuff, I'd be super happy to help. So just let me know and I would love to. But um, let's let's continue this conversation on Discord. I'm going to I'm going to pop off and I'm going to eat my dinner for the night. Uh, kind of get settled and. Uh, get to bed in the next two hours so I can go to work nice fresh rested um, hey I, I'm always happy to help genuinely if there's anything you ever you ever have questions about concerns you ever want advice um, and I mean not even just Pokemon related just like anything gaming life in general just ask away I'm I'm always wanting to help people and give some advice but um, have a fantastic night as well I appreciate you being here. It was awesome. Uh, hopefully next stream's a little bit more lucky, but, uh, well, next stream is going to be the Nuzlocke stream. And I haven't fully decided, but I think I'm going to restart. I think we're going to... I'm going to keep the save. Like, I'm going to back it up and not delete it, but I'm going to... We're going to start a new save file. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to do that and just start from fresh. It'd be so much easier with a starter. And I, I kind of know what I'm doing now, so... Um, I feel like that's kind of, I don't know. I just feel like it makes sense. It's, it's an interesting series. I like doing it. Um, I kind of fucked myself on the run. I could go further right now, but I'm, I'm going to lose inevitably at some point. There's no way with what I have available to me, I can beat the game. So it is what it is. Uh, might as well not waste, you know, a bunch of streams in the future. Might as well just restart and do what I know I can be confident with, but I haven't even looked at Norman, honestly. Let's, let's, I'm going to take two seconds just to see. Um. What I'm up against. Norman. What is his team? And he's next anyway, right? 27 Spinda, Vigorot. Oh, fuck. That Lanoon with Belly Drum? And the Slake. Oh, no way. Yeah, I would get bodied. Absolutely bodied. There's no way. Damn, I'm gonna. Even with a new run, I'm really gonna have to plan that out. I didn't realize how OP Norman is when you're not, uh, when you're not, when you're playing a Nuzlocke. I mean, when you're playing normally, you just level something up a little bit higher and slam the fucker, but. <laughs> um. Yeah, I do. I mean, ideally we could have uh, a Mudkip or something, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to start with the same starter. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. I gotta think about it. But, I've uh, I've putzed along long enough. Um, if you want to continue this chat, just hit me up on Discord. Uh, you can add me and we can talk in the DM or we can talk in the actual Discord. It's cool. Um, but I'll keep that in mind. The Sableye, the Shedinja. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll be there on Thursday to, uh, to put me in the right direction as you usually are. So, um... That being said, I'm going to conclude here. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. Hope you have a fantastic night. Hope uh, hope y'all are all doing well. And yeah, catch you in the next one. Tuesdays, Thursdays, 4.30. Sundays, 2.30. All MST. 
Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. This was me. Peace. Stay safe.